Yes, yes, yes. We on, we on, we on. It just vibes in. Yes, I. Rastafari. Yes. Greetings, ones and all. Just vibes and This is Ras Seymour. Greeting everyone in the name of His Majesty Xavier Karamawi. Highly Celestial. Rastafari. Yes, people. We are here holding our vibes and just meditating on this, um, meditating on this, this, this word and so on. Prayer. Prayer itself. Now, there's certain parts where they say um, that if you're praying for somebody and that person is not a believer, that prayer is not going to work. Both people have to be believers of the same faith, basically as what you are praying for. Because I'll put it this way, like if you're a Muslim and you're praying for a Christian, how that work? <laughs> mm, 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 you know, mm. because you all two believe in something different. Mm. Now, not only that, Bob Marley asks a question, is there a place for the hopeless sinner? You know, hold all mankind just to save his own. Mm, mm, you know, mm. so we have these questions here. We also have in 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 prayer itself, we just reasoning on this word prayer. What is the actual definition of this word prayer? Are we actually interpreting this word correctly and using it correctly within the magic of this word we call English? You know, the spell that they have on us. Abracadabra. <laughs> yes. And people need to understand where the word abracadabra even came yeah, from. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold, hold on that. We're about to get into that too. <laughs> <laughs> go, through, go, so, through, go through, go through, go through. You know, we're going to break down this thing about praying. You know, should we be praying? Who we should be praying to? Who we should be praying for? If we should be praying for anyone at all? And what this word prayer actually break down to in its, et in its etymology. So mm. we're going to attack this thing from a scriptural point of view and break it down with the rabbi right here, Yadin, you know. So Yeshua, Yeshua the rabbi, Rastafari the rabbi, but I and I um, assistant, Rastafari rabbinical assistant. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> a tutor, a tutor. Holy yes, Spirit, sir. may the Holy Spirit, the Isla Irit be the teacher. But here, yes, each one teach one, strengthen one and one. Chazak, chazak. Be strong, be strong, be encouraged. We need chazak. And make I and I encourage one another. Yeah, because that's, that's also another point about the whole hardening of Pharaoh's heart. What does the word hardening really mean? Basically, encourage the boy. You know, just encourage. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, hit me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, like, like, because, you know, once he swing. Then it's on, you know what I mean? So, so, so you help to harden his heart by encouraging him. That's the Hebrew sense. But on prayer, first thing when the brother man brought up the, the subject matter, right? We had went and did what we do sometime, trying to like queue up and line up. Do you remember The Rock? That's why I began off with Movado, Mr. Brooks. You know what I mean? Um, find him to be, in my opinion, very Rastafari. But, you know, sometimes ones and ones get caught up in them streets. You know what I mean? Yes, you get caught up in them streets. But remember when, um, I think it's in the On the Rock, the remix lyric, Movado and Jay-Z, where Jay-Z said, um, um, pray for my enemies, don't pray for me, right? The yeah. full, of full of that was like, if you see me like in the fight with a beer or something like that, you know, um, don't pray for me. You know what I mean? But pray for my enemies. Don't pray for me. And that right there, what did the I say when I brought that up? You said that's very what? That, that kind of said, statement. What? Don't pray for me? Yeah, don't pray for that's, me. Pray for my enemies. Yeah. No, that's a very kind of street type of thing. That's a street vibe. Boom. Right? That's a street. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. That, I just want once and once to hear it, not just from I, but I and I vibes in here. That's a very street kind of a thing. And when we say streets, we're saying the reality, something that uh, Moshe Levi, a.k.a. Brother Shine Poe says, you know, like talking about street justice and Torah. How, how I like how he he interprets being a Yehudi, being a Yid, being a, a Jew, even we the black Jews in very kind of street terms, because there's a reality about the Bible and the scriptures that for lack of a better expression has been lost in translation or lost in mistranslation. Also, well, let me make sure, let me make sure the street thing don't get lost in translation either, guys. When we say streets, now, right? 
I don't want nobody to go think we is gangsters and thinking we're all gangsters. Thing you know, streets is basically we talking about taking it to the ground, taking it on concrete in real life. That's what streets mean. We taking something out of the sky and putting it down on the concrete in real life. How this thing work in real life? Mm. Nothing, no allegory and no sky <laughs> thing and whatnot. How it work in real life and the ground and the streets and the concrete and all. This is what we talking about. What we say on the streets in real life. How things don't function. Mm, 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 mm. Amen, amen, amen. So, so I just point to the on the rock, and many of you already heard it before, you know. But it's that part where he says, like, you know, um, pray for my enemies, you know, don't pray for me. Because, okay, this whole thing about the word pray, okay, let's just do this right here pray, Rastafari, word sound, right? Word sound and power, pick sense of nonsense, right? Pray. How you spell that? P A R A Y or P R E Y? Uh oh, uh oh. We have pray, and we have pray. Is it? You know, I just I just looked up pray P R A Y, and then I put P R E Y in the Google search, and in the Google search, right? It actually there's a Webster Merriam Webster dictionary entry where it says, is it pray P R A Y or is it pray? P R E Y. Like I almost sound, sound like you need to defend yourself. Listen, if you're not my co my co spiritualist, some people say co religionist. But if we move into higher, understand what it means for those who are on the lower program. But for I and I, a co iriticalist, one who's on in the same irit, the same spirit, you know, the same irit, the the Isla irit, the, the the Holy Spirit, spirit of truth, right? Hey, if you pray for I, then it's like you said in your question, then we're of the same, one may say belief of the same, of the same spirit, of the same eye. Right. So, so, hey, I can't tell my brothers and my sisters, my real brothers and sisters in spirit and in truth, not to pray. We, we do that. It's, 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 it's our new nature. You know what I mean? But in a general way of speaking, no, we don't want people just to be praying, praying on us. Or even praying for us, right? It's the same sound. Remember Rastafari talk about word sound, but very That's different right. meaning. But wait, it says same sound, very different. It didn't just say same sound, different meaning, right? You know, but it says same sound, very different meaning. What to know? Yo, I don't, I don't know if you if 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 you see this one right here when you see the video. Like, if you just put pray, anybody out there, put P-R-A-Y, P-R-E-Y in the search. Hit that, and it should come off Merriam-Webster's. This little thing that Google does, sometimes it be pointing out some really good information. It might change up, like, you know, that's why I take screenshots of it. It might change up, you know what I mean? But right now, it says what to know, not, not what to believe. See, people say, say that pray is about believing, right? Well, yeah. one animal that preys on another animal believes that it can <laughs> get that. See, see, even that animal believes. Even that animal believes. You got to take it out of the religious kind of a thing, you know. But you believe you can do that. You could, you can get over. Even if you didn't get over, you believed you could, right? At another time, you might have gotten over. You know, forces and forms, physics. You know what I'm saying? But what to know in a religious in a religious context to pray is to speak to a god uh-oh did it say to speak to the god or or your god or my it says to speak to a god in order to give thanks or to ask for something well you know what i gotta correct y'all on this one no praying is not to give thanks giving thanks is giving thanks see 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 in the Bible, talk about the Levites. There was Levites that were assembled, and some were some were there to to praise, some were there to worship. You know, when they, when the Bible says to worship, to praise, to give thanks, to sacrifice, to pray, each of these are different functions. See, in in Christianities, whitewashed Christianity, the Gentile Christianities, it all gets confused. It's all put under one hat. Like when people say, praise and worship is two different things. I want to do something real quick before we go any further here with this praying thing. Go to Matthew chapter 6 and hit 5 to 18. Matthew chapter 6. 
Yeah, um, 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 give me a key word. Give me some key word in, in, in the verse, the KJV verse, because I'm, I'm, I'm looking it up um, via... Uh, that's key... actually one with the Lord's Prayer. Give us our daily bread. Oh, okay, okay, okay. daily it's... bread. Daily yeah. bread. I, I got that. I got daily bread, and go, go, we, we, we be trying to use some of these, like, work-wise in the technology. Okay, daily bread. Okay, Matthew 6, 11, yeah? Yeah, Matthew, but start at 5. Start at... at yeah, start at 5 and take it to 18. Okay, start at verse 5. Verse 5, right? Yeah. And when thou prayest, thou shall not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily, I say to you, they have their reward. Now remember, Yeshua being Yehudi, right? It's interesting he's saying this. We'll, we'll return hopefully to it. Verse 6. But thou, when thou prayest, and this is, this is, he, this is Yeshua, um, Rabboni Yeshua, I and I Rabbi, the Rabbi of Rabbi Yeshua ha, ha Moshiach. Here he is speaking to his disciples, correct? Let me just check yes. out this chapter here because we like to, okay, take heed. It, it's continuing from verse. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's red letter. It's red letter. Yeah, yeah, so here he's speaking to his disciples. I just want to point out who is speaking and who is he speaking to, you know, the, the, the context so we don't misinterpret or miss, you know what I mean, understand. But thou, when thou prayest, Enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father, thy Ab, Abba, who, is, who seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when ye, y'all, you all, pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do as other nations other people right for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking verse 8 be not y'all therefore like to them to the heathen to the other nations other other people right for your father knoweth what things y'all have need of before y'all ask him then verse 9 after this manner therefore pray y'all our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed or holy, set apart be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen continue right 18. Yeah. Yeah, for 18. for if y'all forgive if you all forgive men and people their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you but if y'all forgive not men their trespasses neither neither will your father forgive your trespasses moreover when y'all fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear to men to fast. Verily, amen, I say to you, truth I say to you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head, thy rosh, thy ras, and wash thy face. Verse 18, that thou appear not to men to fast, but to thy father who is in secret, and thy father who seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Okay, I didn't want us to go through anything to do with praying with before and not touch this because I know somebody would said something about this because it's one of the, as far as prayer goes, it's one of the significant parts of the, the scripture that deals with prayer so i wanted to touch that before we go anywhere else and about this to speak to the father in what we interpret as prayer as praying as where he says in secret 
this thing about praying so other people see you praying who is this for as far as what we call praying today here in the western world as far as praying you say you're praying to the father or whatnot mm, these mm. things is like you said this thing is supposed to be that's that's why they say your religion is personal it is for you so if you're going to speak to the most high and have a conversation with the most high why should anybody else know what going on well especially pray prayer prayer is a word apart here's the next thing i would like to i don't know if the eye is able to do this on what you're working with i want to come back to this verse right here for a moment but let's look up see see when we look up pray like like if you look up pray in the king james bible like what says i pray thee that's not prayer that's not prayer that's not prayer there was like like i pray the eye I pray the eye. That's not prayer there. That's like saying, like, come on now. Like, like almost like, come on, come on. It's like an expression. I want to point that out because if you look up pray, like for, for right now, I'm looking up pray. And Genesis 12 and 13 says, say, I pray thee. The word thee is nah, is nah, nah, nah. Right? And nah is, is not so much, it's a word, but it's more like an expression. Right? It's more like an expression. I want to give ones and ones examples. Almost like if one speak patois, certain African language, like it's like Imri na, like I'm speaking to a woman. Imri na ahoti. Um, 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 say please, my sister. Say please, please, please. Come on. Huh? The word you're saying is na. It's na, 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 like na, na. Like we say no in English, but na. Yeah, na, na. Like, like, okay. like, like, like imri. Im, Amar is like to speak, right, in the Hebrew. And and imri, imri, it, like to say to man, amor, amor, but say imri. Imri no, is like to speak to... The reason I ask that, right, is because I have been noticing a lot of um, words that we in the Caribbean and the Americas use that we call with a slang term. After a while, I started to notice I hear in this word in the Hebrew and the Amharic because we have a saying in the Virgin Islands. My son, stop making narrow no, my son. What kind of narrow are you making? Mm. You know? <laughs> and wow. that's a slang term we use, you check? So when you said that just now, I like, what? <laughs> we don't use that kind of term. And all the Jesus in the slang term, they say, my son, this man making narrow, my what wrong with this man? Stop making that narrow, my what are you making? Uh. So when you said that just now, it's <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, it, 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 Salah, nah, like Salah, like please forgive. Salah, nah, like yeah, yeah, nah. It's a, it, it's a expression. Even though nah occurs in other expressions, it's not the same thing as the context will show. But you yeah. probably do hear it, like, like in, like if I'm saying to to a woman, right? If I'm saying, um, please say my sister, please say this, my sister. If I was to say that in Hebrew, like Imri na achoti, Imri na, please say achoti, achoti, like a hadi, achoti, like achoti, right, achoti, like my sister, you know. So it is like a way of saying it's not pray, pray, but in the King James version, they translate like I pray thee. It's that expression. We as Rastafari also use that expression no doubt because of you know the 400 years and linguistics you know what i mean we yeah. have that like i pray the eye i pray the eye you know like i pray the eye like like it's like that nah like i pray the eye the pray part is like the eye nah nah the eye nah the eye so when you say like put, stop your gnawing <laughs> like, like, like it's like it's like you're begging it's like saying as expressions like saying come on now come on uh-huh uh-huh come on come on you know what i mean but yeah. That's not the word pray. I say that because we want to look at where do we find the word pray. Now, when you look up the word pray, the first time you find the word pray, like, I mean, I mean, prayer, 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 the fuller word prayer in the King James Version of the Bible, starting from the ground zero, right, is 2 Samuel 7, 27. This is the first time we have in translation the word prayer. Now think about it. We have Genesis, Exodus, right? Um, Leviticus, uh, Numbers, Deuteronomy, um, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. You know what I'm saying? All these books we got to go through and some more before we get to Samuel. So the first time we have the word prayer 
in the King James Bible is all the way in 2 Samuel 7, 27, right? And who is this right here that's speaking in 2 Samuel um, 7, 27? Is this David? Is this David? This must be David. Is this David right here? Yeah, this is David. So 22, you says 22? Second Sam, yeah, Second Samuel seven twenty seven, seven twenty seven. If I said twenty two, my bad. Seven twenty seven. Yeah, seven two seven. Yeah, okay, I'm good. And he says, "For thou, Yahweh Sabaoth, Jehovah of hosts, Jehovah of armies, Sabaoth, Sabaoth, God of Israel, Elohe Yisrael, has revealed to thy servant." Now David here is speaking like in the third person, you know, to thy yeah. servant, saying. I will build thee an house. Therefore hath thy servant found in his heart to pray this prayer to thee. Right? So we have the word prayer, pray, palal. Palal means to intervene, to interpose, to pray, to mediate. Right? But you know what the word really means in the Hebrew? To judge officially and mentally. This is why when Christ says, when Christ says, when you pray, don't doubt in your heart. When you pray, right, um, pray as though you already received it. That means that when we judge officially, we judge by Torah. In a way, we judge by his revelation, his direction. Do I have a right to pray this? Do I have a right to ask this? And I, if I'm, am I confident that I'm worthy to receive what I'm asking? All of this goes on before one even opened their mouth, right, you know, to the king or to the most high, to the almighty, to utter one's words, right? That's what it means to judge. Actually, it means like to weigh something, to judge it officially, which means by the law or the revelation and mentally. That means that we can't say, well, I know I have a right to, but in my heart, my mind, I'm doubting. Because then what the Messiah says, you know what he says elsewhere, where he says that he who doubts, don't let him think he's going to receive anything. Yeah. Because doubting right there cancels out the whole act of prayer. You know what I mean? That means that yeah, you, we're praying for you, don't believe. you judge yourself as unworthy, basically, you know? So by extension, it can mean to intercede, to intercede. In other words, the judge has or the king has gone against you or my brother, my sister. But I think it's because somebody has lied on them. So I try to intercede. So I am praying in a sense the king, I'm making the case by how this one might have been judged, misjudged wrongly according to, according to the law. That's what David does in the Psalms. If you notice, what David does in the Psalms, he's actually singing a song on one level, but he's making a legal argument on the next one, especially Psalm 51. If one's going to look at Psalm 51, when he says against thee, against thee only have I done this evil in thy sight. Notice he killed the man. Well, he, he first committed adultery with the man's wife and then he killed the man too. But then in his prayer to the almighty, to Yahweh, right? He is saying to Jehovah, he's saying against thee, against thee only have I done this. Why? Because he's now pointing officially to the law. In other words, if there was no law that says thou shall not, it would not be wrong to do this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is this is the scope of when we talk about the Hebrew and the Torah. This is the scope of the Torah. That's why Paul says something interesting when Paul says that that he only knew about coveting and about certain things that are wrong because the law says so. Yeah. I, I see a gal over there, a woman over there, she looks attractive, and, and my mind, my soul, my body is reacting. Is it wrong? Well, it's wrong because Torah said, oh, that's that, that's that brother and sister, and that's the brother and wife. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but by nature, it is not. You remember the whole exercise began with the, the knowledge of the tree of, of good and evil? And so everything that we experience is, is the exercise of that, that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This is what we often forget. Whether it's the bad and the worst things that we see or experience or hear about, it's all part of this working out where we as human beings wanted to know. <laughs> we wanted to know, right? That's why the teaching of his majesty is the teaching of the Messiah where he says good over evil. Yes. Good over evil. 
right? But the first thing, how can you put good over evil if you really claim, say, you don't know what good is and you don't know what evil is? You need experience. That's why experience is the best teacher. Sometimes you can tell a person about something and then you could maybe leave them, leave them to themselves and even encourage them or help to harden their heart, encourage them. Okay, I told you this, but you don't believe it. So go ahead and find out for yourself. Go ahead, go ahead, find out for yourself, right? Because when they find out now for themselves through the experience, guess what? Now they know. So there's a different judgment on one who knows. Like it says, the almighty Elohim, highly him, he pities babies and fools, right? Yeah. I'm not talking about the fool who says in his heart, because the fool who says in his heart in the Hebrew... There's no, there's no God. That's not the fool we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, that fool is not, a, is not an intellectual fool. We're talking about people who are simple, like simpletons, like like they, they only been told half the story. Like everybody is good and everything that that if you walk around for a smile, everything will be wonderful for you. You know, you know what I'm saying? You know, like like in, in some cases, like animals show you. Sometimes the animal has to show you their teeth. Back up a cat or or a dog or something in the corner. Watch what happens. Even a little there's cat. A, there's a there's a scripture when people listening to this, they might actually go to. So let me go there before they go there. Um, John fourteen sixteen. Oh wait, wait. Are you going to Paul? We said I pray not for the. Yes, I. He said, and and I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another Comforter, that He may abide with you forever. Mm. But, but you actually start at verse thirteen and read to seventeen. Uh, but, but hold, hold for a moment. I think is that the same section where he says, "I pray not for the world." That's the part I want to. I want to. Oh, I'm in John 17 and nine. Can, can we just go there? I'll, I'll I'll double back to John 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. John, go there first, and then we come back. John 17 and nine says, "I pray for them. I pray not for the world." Pause. How many times you heard people say, "Pray for the world"? <laughs> uh oh, that. uh oh. You're praying for the world, but here. And I'm talking about Christians. People who are not Christians, well, they're under other gods or whatever philosophy, so they could do differently as long as they're faithful to whatever they believe. But for the Christian who said they believe in Yeshua, yes, it's Jesus. He says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Here, people call this one Yeshua as our high priest. In the role of our high priest around that pass over time, this is what the priest kind of prays on behalf. First, remember, first the priest offers for his own sins, you know what I mean? Yes. And then he offers for the sin of the people. First, he had to clear himself. Self force, yeah, because yeah. you can't be unclean and trying to clean other people. Like yeah, yeah, you don't want a doctor first like to operate on you, but he didn't wash his hands or her hands. Yeah. You want them to prepare, you know, get antiseptic and all that, and then come in and do the work, you know what I mean? Um, and, and then, so we see here and in verse 15, just a couple of verses, um, forward, he says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. Talking about us and ones who have faith in him in the King of Kings, Christ in Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos. He says, he is not praying as our high priest that the father should take us out of the world, but that thou, the most high should keep them, keep us from evil to guard us. You know what I mean? From the evil, from the hurtful, from the sad, from the bad, from the unkind, from 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 the vicious. You know, I, I like to bring that out because people have this theological view of evil, but evil basically means anything that it, it's something that's bad, something that's sad, something that's hurtful, that's harmful. All that's technically evil. And that should be cleansed from yourself first before anywhere else. Ah, because sometimes ones might have evil thoughts and evil thoughts can prevent good prayers. Yes, sir. Somebody may have prayed for something on your behalf and it's still there with the almighty, with the true power, but the true power cannot deliver to you until you get right. You know what I mean? You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of you ever play football, like American football, and the quarterback sometimes can't send that pass until until like the running back or whoever gets free gets clear you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah. like i want to pass the ball to you but you're gonna to have to shake this person the other team the other team guy is right there and yeah, he just yeah 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 exactly he's waiting for me to throw the ball 
You know what I mean? And then he's going to knock you down. Or even if he don't get the ball, he's going to knock you down. And it's going to be one of those fumbles. You know what I'm saying? And the other team might get the ball. You know, so you have to get clear. You have to clear yourself. So here we have clearly where Yeshua says he's not praying for others. Right? And if you look at the verse before that, he says, For I have given to them the words which thou gavest me. So Yeshua is saying that someone else gave him some words. The Father, right, gave him words that now he's given to his disciples, and they, the disciples, receive them. They Kabbalah them and have known surely that I came out from thee. Now, I say right here that Yeshua truly is an emanation. This, this, this expression, I came out from thee, he came out, because remember, he's of the same nature. Right? He's of the same nature. That's what I say. I and the Father is one, but the Father is greater than the Son because fatherhood is greater than sonship. Well, in, in, in certain teachings, especially uh, from the Gnostics, they will tell you that uh, the Son, Yeshua, Mashiach, Jesus Christus, if you want to call him Jesus, you know, he is a perfect duplication. The word. So, <laughs> He's not a copy. He's a perfect, perfect duplication of the Father. So whatever the Father can do, he can do because he's a perfect duplication of the Father. So when he say, when you see me, you see the Father. When you, fa you see the Father, you see me. How many times have you seen in families that a son looks identical to his father? Look at the story of Solomon and Menelik. When mm. he came to visit Menelik before he reached to Jerusalem, people thought that they were seeing Solomon passing through their territory. They had to send people to Jerusalem to make sure Solomon is in Jerusalem and not down here because he looked at spitted image as his father. Mm -hmm. and, let's, and let's just speak on the outer. How many times also has somebody has the very same psychological yes, and spiritual nature too? Yes. Yeah, yeah you'd be like, you'd be like, you're a lot like them. You know what I mean? Even if they are like one in, in the physical, imagine being like ones in the mental. In, in the but, spirit, in the nature. But, but there is those that who are similar or almost identical in the physical and total opposite in the spiritual. And then there's some who is total opposite in the physical, but they are symbiotic in the spiritual. Ah, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like Israel would, it, would be symbiotic in the physical, but the Father requires that they be symbiotic in, in the, the spiritual. spiritual. But the other nations... They could be symbiotic in the in the psychological, spiritual aspect, but not symbiotic because they're not of that DNA. You know what and I mean? Just, and just for the ones who are listening, who don't um, adhere to the Rastafari liberty, what we are speaking about right here, when you hear us say, I and I, <laughs> this is what we're speaking about right here, that, that iritical connection, the I and I. Mm, mm, so mm. I and I, this is the I and I reasoning right here as well in the Iridical. True, true, true. You know what I mean? True, truly, truly, truly. You know? Um, yeah. yeah we'll, we'll jump over here on um, 14. 14? <laughs> Chapter yeah, 14? Um, John, yeah, John 14, um, 13 to 17. 13 to 17. Um, I'm right here. We're here. Where it says, and whatsoever. Y'all yes, shall ask in my name, in Beshem Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua, Beyesusim, right? In my name, that will I do that the Father, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If, verse 14, if y'all shall ask anything in my name, Beshem Yeshua, Right, I will do it. Verse 15. Yeah, hit the 17. If y'all love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray. Uh-oh. I will pray. So Yeshua the Son, I will pray Ha'ab, the Father. And he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, the iron of truth. What did Yeshua say to the Samaritan woman that Elohim requires that that we worship him not in a place but in spirit and in truth? Truth, yes. Even the spirit of truth, 
whom the world cannot, look at that word, cannot, underline that word, cannot receive, because it, the world, seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye all know him, for he dwelleth with you, that's tawahido, that oneness, with you, and shall be in you, in you. That's the tawahido, that's that oneness. That's what I mean by the oneness. Yes, I that's what Paul was talking about when Paul said, until Christ be formed in you. That's why Yeshua said, and they say, here or there is Christ, believe it not. You know, because basically with his majesty, wasn't that they say, here is Christ, is that uh, the sheep heard the fathers, heard the voice. We know the voice. Know the voice. See, so we, we proclaimed him and then... Technically, he is the black Messiah because to be a Messiah, the link with Israel must be there and the priesthood must be there. The ark is there. The anointing is there. The throne is there. The history, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> is I, I want to touch on that fourth sentence on 16. 16. Yeah, the four sentence and sixteen. Well, you know, since we there on the topic, you know, in the Amharic, the, you know, the Eastern break that down. Verse sixteen. Word pray? Yeah, four sixteen. How does that word pray? Okay, okay. All right, let's go break from the. In, let's go in, from in the, that, Like in that context, how does it break down? Let's go from the Greek. Let's go from the Greek and, and work our way up from low degrees to high degrees. Here we have erotio, erotio here from the Greek, right? To question, to ask to request, to entreat, to beg, to beseech, right? And it says apparently from, let me get these two words here, ereo, to utter, to say, and the word um, erenuile, right, to search. So to basically to ask, to request. But here, that's just the Greek right there, right? That's one of the words for, right? Let me see if I bring this up here because actually we have this, I'll get to the Hebrew last, because the Hebrew really dictated the Greek and not the other way around. But let's go to, let me go, let me go to, to this Amharic program here. Oh man, okay, okay, great. Wait, 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 how come it's, oh man, it's on the side. This one's on the side right here. Okay, let me, let me come out of that one. No, no, some apps, you'll see it in the video. Some apps open like, like um, landscape, you know, landscape long view. Yeah, a long way, yeah. And some of them still open sideways. So that's why I have competing apps because I recognize in doing some videos, right? Okay, what what, what chapter? Just remind me the chapter and verse again. I'm going through the Amharic software. The John 14, chapter 16. Okay, John 14. So once you see on the screen, we're going through the IOTA software. A very good software. It's one of the first softwares that actually use His Majesty's text. Many of the other ones also use His Majesty's text, the Amharic software, right? Because it's more correct. It's, it's, it's correct. It, it, in other words, the same way we search the English to the Hebrew or the Greek, we can do the same thing with His Majesty's Bible. And many times it corresponds, well, we can tell that the Greek in many ways is correct and the Hebrew in many ways. It's those areas where they're not correct. That <laughs> that's the thing, you know what I mean? Is what it different. Verse verse what? What's 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 the verse? Verse sixteen. Oh, well, what's the chapter? Fourteen. Fourteen, yeah, fourteen. My bad, 16. my bad. I'm in, I'm, in, I'm, in, I was in sixteen. Okay, so we have verse sixteen. Okay, fifteen and sixteen is one long verse. Is one. So sometimes instead of what we have, say two verses, sometimes yeah. verses will be joined up because the idea that it conveys. Is wrapped up in two verses, not one. So here it says, Bita Wadun, Bit Wadun Tizazena Tabku, Enem Abin Elemnalo, Lezalalemim, Kanantegar in Dinor, Leila at nine, Yiset at Chihual. So basically, what it's saying, okay, if you love me, Bita Wadun, Bita Wadu, if all of y'all, Nye, me, Bita Wadun, if you love me, to Izazain, my commandment, in a singular sense here in Amharic, to Izazain, to Izaz, to Izaz commandment, to Izaze, my commandment, to Izazain, the n, the n at the end puts the emphasis for where the verb is, and the verb is tebku, tebku, tebku is like to to guard, to protect, 
like to guard, to keep. That's the, the word for to keep, to guard, to protect. So he says, if you love me, if y'all, you all love me, my commandment, in the singular sense, tebko, bitu wadun, tizazain tebko. Then the next part of it. Before you go to the next part, before you go to the next part right there, um, I just thought of something here. When you say, um, Covenant, because in your interpretation, what you have there in the in, in, in original transcripts or whatever, in this one here, it has a plural where it says commandments. You say commandment. Okay. Oh, okay, let me go over here. Let so, me go over here. Go. No, go, 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 go ahead. But what I'm going to ask here is uh, when you say a single line commandment, um, I'm interpreting this, and let me see if I'm right or wrong. Let me know. I'm interpreting this as basically. Um, the trinity of the covenant where it's laws statutes and commandments to be a covenant keeper that's the way i'm interpreted like am i wrong well it's like we say bar mitzvah bar means son in aramaic and mitzvah or mitzvah means a commandment mitzvah uh, vote mitzvot is commandments so being a son of the commandment we usually say son of the commandments but basically it's the commandment. It's basically all one commandment. So in that unified sense, it's one commandment. You know what I'm saying? Like it's all yeah. one commandment. Like we say like do good in that sense, in a, in a summarization. What I just did right here was I went to the Hebrew right here. Um, um, Paraklit, no, not Paraklit. It says right here. It says, um, okay, okay, which verse? Okay, it's actually the verse before, the 15th. 15, yeah, 15, because the verse is right here. It says, um, Im ahavtem ot. Okay, if you ahavtem ot, ot, if you love me, if y'all love me, et uh, um, mitzotai, mitzotai. Here it has commandments too in the Hebrew, tishmoru, tishmoru. Yeah, mitzotai, mitzotai, tishmoru. So here it has it also in the plural. I've noticed that. Let me just point this out. I've noticed that in some cases it will have it in the singular sense, right, within the Amharic. Now, I'm not too sure the exact reasons behind that, but I just emphasize that right there. That basically it is... No, but I, I, I caught up on that and it didn't change my interpretation. You know, because I interpret that basically, like I said, as, you know, to be a covenant keeper, these three things need to be upheld, to be a covenant keeper, which is the law, statutes, and commandments. So I always, when you put that, that was always my interpretation. That's why I wanted to know well, if I was half base or not. Well, to put it another way, put it another way, put it another way. The Ten Commandments, remember I've, I've talked about this before, done a couple of videos and reason, but people are going to get it in their own time, that the Ten Commandments is a euphemism. It's actually ten words. It's all one commandment. That's why James says that if you break one, you break all. You know what I mean? Because the ten, the ten commandments in the Hebrew is actually ten words. It's not commandments, but it's what is referred to as the commandment. So in other words, the ten quote commandments in the Hebrew and the Amharic, it is literally ten words. Because yeah, those, that's, those, that's why I interpret it the way I interpret it. That I, 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 I understand that reason because I got that reason from the eye. And, from, and, and we got from I his mouth. I like that because I put that, that covenant keeper as a trinity. Laws, statutes, and commandments. Well, laws, so statutes, st statutes, and commandments. But what his master said, remember what his master said? That his advice to all in the Lutheran interview was to fulfill. The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. Now, that's what the translators translated, but in his own Bible, we have it written the same way the Hebrew has as ten words, but those ten words is the commandment. Is the one, is, 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 is the one commandment. It, yeah, it's one commandment because one liberty. In, in other words, I think the yeah. first four verses, first four verses, the well, first four words, what's called commandments, um, is, is our relationship with with with, with Elohim, with Exiavia. With God. And then the other six is our relationship with one and one. Now, I've heard some interpreted like this. Since the first four commandments or four words govern our relationship between God and man. And then that's like a vertical relationship, like a vertical line. And then the other six, they govern our relationship with man and man, with one and one, with the community. 
So what you have there is a cross, if you can picture it. You know what I mean? Yeah. The vertical relationship, like the straight line, and then the horizontal mm -hmm. line, which, which makes a plus sign. You know what I mean? In other words, so that's another way of bringing out some of what is prophetic and also symbolic, or we could say metaphorical. In other words, our relationship with the Almighty is regulated by our relationship with one another. Our relationship with one another by our relationship with the Almighty. We can't just say, well, I choose to have this relationship with my brother, but I don't want to have this relationship with my Heavenly Father. It doesn't make no sense, you know, or vice versa. Or vice versa. You exactly. know, like some people are like, I'm a, it's all about God, only God, like it's only God, and the rest of us could fade away. But that's not how he says it in the, in the Ten Words. In the Ten Words, the Ten Commandments, it clearly governs our relationship with God and man. You know, bringing about that oneness, the God and man oneness. Yes, sir. So, yeah, man, the eye is correct on that. I, I kind of emphasize, I, I like the fact that you picked up on that right there. That's a point in and of itself, um, but that's a good explain, uh, explanation in the sense of bringing it to another area of our studies, that the commandment is what you've been told is the Ten Commandments. Properly, in Amharic and Hebrew, the Ten Words. One commandment. You know what I mean? And James, the pistol of James says that if you break one, you break them all. See, and James, what James was saying was like being a Yehudi, being a Jew, is he basically brought out the sense that the Jews already understood. That's where a lot of things in Christianity get confused. It gets confused because you have people coming f from heathen or other, other, other nations, you know, other philosophies. That's a, that's a point of view I don't think a lot of people come from when they speak about the the law, statutes, and commandments itself as far as in the ancient time amongst our ancient Hebrew, Hebrew um, like Israelite people, that they knew these things and they practiced and lived these things because this is the, like we said, this is the way. So mm. they... They knew the way so this is something that they they didn't have to be taught this because it was a, a liberty this was taught to the gentiles mm, 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 this mm. is something that we already knew so when we transgress it was even worse because this is supposed to be our liberty yeah and then the gentiles then teach us their misunderstanding of things that we might have taught them exactly you know what I mean? They they then twist up the un understanding on us. Yeah. Let's get to the second part of this verse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. go ahead and hit 16. Verse 16. So, because that word is interesting because it's another word for pray, but I don't see that word, that word is not used there because we're speaking about a different kind of pray. So, even in English, for everybody watching and listening, even in English, there's a few different words which are confused, right, in translation. So, you see, pray is not always the same word in English. You know what I'm saying? In other words, when you see the word pray in English in the Bible, there's at least three different meanings of it. One is to like say please, in a sense, like I pray thee, right? The next one is like this one here where in Amharic it says, His Majesty's Bible, Book of the Seven Seals, King of Kings Bible. In name, in a means I, in a is I. In name is like to say an I. A name and I, Abin Elemnalo. Abin. Ab is father. Abin is like, like the father, the father pointing to the father. Abin Elemnalo. So he says he's going to pray. He says, and I, and as for I, right? As for I, he's saying, y'all, if y'all love me, keep my commandment. Keep the, keep the commandments, right? And I, and I, in response to your love, by keeping the commandment, I will lemnalo, lemnalo, lemina in Amharic is the word for beg. It's like the word for um, to beseech, to beseech. Like when you see that word in King James translation, beseech, many times in Amharic is from the lemina, malemen, right? The word that means to like beg, like, you know, somebody's out there, can you please give me something? Can you please, please, can, can I have this? Can, you know what I mean? That's, it's a way of saying to ask, but it can also mean it has degrees. It can be just to ask, not to ask, like ask a question, but it's like to ask to be given something. Almost like a beggar is a lemine, lemine. So, okay, so 
based on what you're saying right now, based on how this is written here in front of us, it shows a disconnect between him and the father that he has to pray to him. But your interpretation that I am getting from you is that there is no disconnect because he's not praying to him. He's actually speaking in a conversation to the father, that begging him for what he's asking for you. Am I correct? Correct. Correct. In other words, technically, technically, it could be considered that he will make a prayer because in prayer, there is usually that act of begging, beseeching something in prayer. In other words, a lot of functional terms get confused, like when modern Christians say a praise and worship service, right? A praise and worship service, right? Praise itself means like to give praise, thanks, or sing songs of thanks. Worship literally means to prostrate, to bow, literally. So we as Israelites, and according to Torah, if we was keeping covenant, we would only worship three times in a year. But we can praise and we can pray anywhere at any time. We didn't have to just pray or praise in Jerusalem. We could pray and praise anytime. You know, that's what Yeshua said about standing. There is a standing prayer. What's called the standing prayer, but literally, it's not really the standing prayer. This real name is the 18 blessings. It's more or less where we come together. It's like a congregational worship, like we would do in the temple. We come together, and there is certain formula that we would read that come from the scripture. You know what I mean? Point to yeah. the, like we share some of it on the podcast. And now, if anyone had to pray, prayer is not out loud, prayer is a is a quiet, a secret thing. You know what I mean? Now, David, he prayed in some Psalms, it might say a prayer of David. But notice, it's a prayer that David, in a new way, kind of put as a song. You know what I'm saying? David was like innovative. In fact, the whole order of the priesthood that comes down to New Testament time is because of something that David did. David wanted to make sure that all the Levites had an opportunity in their life to serve. So he set these orders, I think like 24 watches of the priesthood throughout the years so that every priestly family or Levitical family, both the priests and the Levites would have an opportunity to serve before the Ark of the Covenant. I point that out because a lot of things that we get in David bring it, brings us to the new covenant sense. So what David did, he took a prayer to make a prayer more pleasing. He made it as a song. Are you following what I'm saying? And yeah. in that song, he wove in praise. In that song, he wove in, 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 in thanks, you know, worship. You know what I mean? He, you know what I'm saying? He basically like kind of remix what the ancients were doing in a more holistic sense. So when he was, the first to chant a song. he was one of the first ones, I would say his chanting of the song brought together everything that we loved and respected about our form of King's music, like reggae. You know what I mean? It's only like Bob Marley on a certain level and the Whalers and other Roots artists. Men, the Roots artists have brought forward the essentials of what we love and what truly is the King's music. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that other modern like DJing and rapping and so forth and so on is not worthy, but there's something about like when we talk about like music like Bob Marley and the Whalers and that kind of music, you notice how that music sounds similar and it's constructed in a similar way. It has praise, praising the almighty, you know what I mean? And yeah. then it might talk about whatever the problem or the situation is in verses you know what i mean but then it goes back to praising and being you know what i mean and worshiping you know what i mean so it wasn't like most people would pray and oh god oh god please give me give me help me help me help me help me you know um i'm, I'm not a bad person i'm not you know what i mean it, it begins re repetitive so what david did was put the repetition into song you see what i'm saying you know what i mean and it was the repetition part of it was the chorus was the praise like you'll find a lot of psalms, if you read through it, you'll find a similar verses in the same psalm. It's almost like you read a psalm and you say, wait, this verse came a couple of verses ago. You know what you found? The chorus line. Yes, That's the chorus line right there. But you'll notice between the chorus line, sometimes the verses will be different. 
where David, he, he be talking about how his enemies, you know, and our enemies, you know, want to exterminate us. See, you know what I'm saying? But then he'll go back to praising the Almighty's might. You know what I'm saying? So when Christ here is saying that he's going to um, lemon it, he's going to ask. Oh, okay, let me bring this up for everybody who's watching this particular vlog here. I'm bringing up another software. It's called Abyssinica, right? The Mizgebek Allah. It's a very, very good dictionary. I show it in a couple other videos. Here, I want to bring up on the screen the root word of Elemnalo. Elemnalehu. Elemnalehu. Said in a normal Ethiopian um, voice or tone as Elemnalo. Elemnalo means I will beg, I will beseech. Right? And that comes from this word here. I'm searching this. Come on. Okay, here we go. Lemonet. To adjure, to entreat, to crave, to cry for. Here's what the dictionary has it. Invoke, but, but here's the key words, biblically. To beg, beseech, or besought, to implore, to sue, to supplicate. Good word, good word. I missed that word. Supplication. supplication. It's like a supplication. To make a plea, to make a plea, to plead, to plead with. So this word properly would be like to beseech to beg, to entreat, to ask, but in a, where you're beseeching, you might be begging on your own behalf or somebody else's behalf, um, to court, to crave, to implore. And in a sense, it can mean to pray, right? But not to pray as a prayer, prayer would be. But in one's prayer, you might have um, lemina, lemina. You might have um, begging, beseeching, you know, like, you know, like, like in your full prayer, you might have some areas where you're really begging something. You're soliciting. You know, you're supplicating to urge. It's like to urge. You know, so what Christ is saying that he will he will plead or urge, you know, the Father, you know what I mean, to send another comforter. But he's not saying that he is going in prayer. He's not saying that he's, he's going to make a prayer to the Father. But he will beg you know what I mean? He will beg the Father. So they could have actually translated this as, um, how could they have translated this as, looking at this word right here, um, to, to interrogate, to ask. They could have said ask or beseech. You know what I mean? But I would say he basically will, will beseech or he will beg the Father. Lezelalem. And forever Kanan Tegar with you all in Dinor for him to be Layla, another at nine, at nine, another strengthener, another kind of tutor or comforter. Right? The word comforter has a lot to do with like the Ethiopic word to strengthen, only to strengthen, right? But to strengthen like almost that like you console somebody's heart, somebody's like broken hearted in a sense, you console their heart, you strengthen. But it can also mean, like, in a sense, like the tutor, right? Leila at nine, you said that he will send for he will he will he will give set he will give you all another strengthener, another supporter, or in the translations, another comforter. But you notice all of that is conditional. All that's conditional. He says, if you love me, right? If you love me, right? keep my commandment think about it if you don't love me i'm not even speaking to you but if you say you do love me keep my commandment and i will beseech will supplicate will ask will plead the father right and forever to dwell with you he will give you all y'all another strengthener another supporter another comforter another at nine at nine, to, to be senized, like to be firm. Another like affirmer. Another way of saying this is to say like another affirmer. You know what I mean? And that's the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit will affirm it to us. Even if people don't believe other people, the Holy Spirit will testify with your spirit that you're a son or a daughter. You know? So this whole thing about pray, right? The word pray and prayer. Let me do this right here because I want to go back to the the um what was it that was verse the thing, the thing is too i trying to find a verse then i can't find it there's a verse somewhere say um where he will not hear your prayers uh, 
oh, 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 you talking about, and I think it's in the commandments, like if you don't forgive, well, okay, if you don't forgive me and men their things, then how you expect the Father to forgive you? Yeah. Um, or advocate, yeah, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, comforter. What you saying? Because, because you have some people, um, I think in the book of Isaiah right now, right? And you got a couple of places I might want to touch in the book of Isaiah. Um, Isaiah 59, the first, the first four verses in Isaiah 59, right? Um, we have a lot of people throughout history who do a heap of wicked thing and then take up a Bible and go pray and go to church on Sunday and, you know, talk about their praising the Lord and these kind of things, you know. And to so some of them in their heart, they really believe that they, they and God good. But the same book that they covered in too, telling them something different. But all the praying they do it. That's why I was trying to find out one day where he said, um, he will not hear your praise. But if you reach Isaiah 59, right? Oh, 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 actually, Isaiah 1 and 15. I just wanted to look that up. At least. Well, I, well I, that's why I did right now. I did in Isaiah 1 and 15. I was going to do 4, 4 to 6, then 15 to 18. And then hit to, I mean, actually 15 to, to, to 20. So go ahead, sing. Um, let's just over there already. Yeah, yeah, there's a few. There's a few. Hold on for a moment. There's, there's, a, there, there's about four verses I find where he would not hear the prayer. Isaiah 1 15. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when y'all make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. So this one said your hands are mul yeah, multiplied. We multiply prayer and your hands are full of bloods, right? Um, I just want to share this one with you as well. Jeremiah 7, 16, just a highlight verse. Therefore pray not for this people and here's the word palal yeah don't yeah palal yeah, yeah. Pray, pray not for this people neither lift up cry um arena arena a cry a supplication a ringing entreaty a praise or a prayer for them neither make intercession so intercession paga paga by right? intercession to me for i will not hear thee so notice what it says in this verse here it says Therefore, pray that. Don't pray for them, right? Don't lift up a cry, a rina, right? Rina could be, could be like someone like so happy that they're singing in the high tone, or somebody so sad that they're singing in the high tone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it says no prayer, no prayer for them. No, says no prayer for them. Don't pray. Don't, don't, don't like pray for them, and don't have a prayer for them neither make intercession to me then in jeremiah 11 and 14 he says therefore pray not thou for this people so here there's a command not to pray for this people neither lift up a cry or prayer for them sounds a lot like the other verse in in chapter what was that chapter seven right yeah. in chapter seven right here, verse 11, I mean, chapter... Yeah, because in what you're reading right there, Jeremiah 11, and um, I have that highlighted. I have 9 to 16 highlighted in my Bible. And like in my Bible, that's why I have um, highlighted. 9 to 16 is why I have highlighted. Mm -hmm. But here he says, here he says like, like, don't waste your time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't, don't waste your time with your prayer because your prayer is not going to be... In fact, let me look at it. We say you have 9 to what? 9 to 16. Jeremiah 11, 9 to 16 is why I, um, I have highlighted. It. it says, As for Yahweh saith, and the Yahweh saith to me, a conspiracy is found among the men of Yehuda and inhabitants of Jerusalem. They are turned back to the iniquities, the moral perversities of their forefathers, which refused to hear my words. Remember the words, ten words, yeah? And they went after other gods, Elohim Acharim. They went after the Acharim, the other, right? To serve them. The house of Israel, the Beta Israel, and the Beta Yehuda, the house of Judah, hath broken my covenant, which I made with their patriarchs, their fathers. Therefore, thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I will bring evil, right? Evil, Ra'a, Ra'a bad evil worse unhappiness sadness unkindness all of that injury calamity adversity distress 
right? All that come under that heading upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry to me, Za'ak, Za'ak, it would be more better shriek. Though they will shriek to I, I would not hearken to them. You know, like somebody, somebody, you know, somebody, yeah, shrieking out. Wow. Verse 12, then shall the cities of Yehuda and the inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry to the gods, the Elohim, to whom they offer incense, Aishans, but they shall not save them at all in the time of this trouble according to the number of thy cities were thy gods thy elohim oh yehuda judah that's like all these different kind of denominations and everything yeah mm -hmm. and according to the number of the streets of jerusalem wow that's like you know in the black community and i heard in jamaica and some parts of the caribbean they have more churches than anything else notice that in, like, in the black american community more churches back in the days still is but used to be worse back in the days it reminds me of this verse right here oh, according to the number of the streets of jerusalem you know have y'all set up altars to that shameful thing wow it calls it the shameful thing boshet it's what's known as the boshet, right? The boshet, boshet, right? The boshet. Even altars to burn Aishans to Baal. Now notice how like how the marijuana, they try to make the marijuana legal. Now everybody burn it to everything. Think about it, right? Yeah. yeah. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them. For I would not hear in the time that they cry to me in their trouble. What verse you went up to? 16? 16. Okay, two more. What hath my beloved to do in mine house, seeing she have wrought lewdness with many, and the holy flesh, get that there, and the holy flesh is passed from thee. Mm. When thou doest evil, unkind unhappy adverse injurious bad then thou rejoices right um what what is what is to my beloved in my house just some key words here when thy evil okay verse 16 yahweh jehovah called yahweh called thy name a green olive tree fear or beautiful is that beautiful yafe Yafe, like like beautiful, right? Beautiful Yafe, and of goodly fruit, with the noise of a great tumult, he have kindled fire up on it, and the branches of it are broken. Now it's interesting because when he speaks to about she, is speaking about our collective soul. You know, one heart, one soul, our soul, and our soul is a feminine. Our soul is is is. Is, is is she i'm talking about we as a people all of us man woman all of us as when he's speaking about israel and he's speaking about judah he's speaking about our collective soul you know like the like the tune one heart one soul you know like you know like we, we don't say it like that but that's what we've been trying to grasp to that's what we're trying we, to get to let me go back to 14 14 and hit, uh, uh, to 14 i hit that 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 prayer that prayer and prayer in the Hebrew or the American, uh, and see what if there's a same, if oh, this oh, is oh. a correct interpretation of how it is said. Uh, okay, let's start off. Let's start with the the Hebrew here, since this is like an old an old T scripture, you know, because Ethiopia got some of the the prophets after the time of what they got from Solomon and and and, and you know and and Sheba, you know what yeah. I mean? So um, start with the Hebrew. So here, when it says therefore. Therefore, pray not thou for this people. Let me just go. Let me let me bring up the Hebrew itself right here. Therefore, pray not. Vata um, vata al titpalel, and and you speaking to Jeremiah, singular man. Waata waata al titpalel. Don't pray, baad on behalf haam hazet on the behalf of this people. Um, waala tisa ba. Adam, Rina, and neither lift up like you know um, a cry, um, u tefila, right, or a tefila or a prayer, 
ki a nani for for I will not ki a nani a nani like I will not a nani shomeya a nani shomeya not I shomeya hearing shomeya is like shama 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 is like to like to say hear as a command and shomeya is hearing so he's saying for I won't be hearing right but eight in the in the time um Ar'am, in the time that they call a lie, a lie to I upon I. Ba'ad, right, ra'atam, right, in, in their trouble, like in their trouble. So the key words here, the word pray here is palal, palal. Palal is that one to interpose, right, to interpose. This is the root, right, this is the root. It means to meditate, or to, excuse me, to mediate, to mediate, to judge, to intercede. So a prayer properly, the sense in the Hebrew, palal, or another pointing, falal, right? But palal means to, to like intervene, almost like you get between two people and you try to mediate, right? To intercede, well, or you're trying to intercede on somebody's behalf. But it means to judge in the sense of officially or mentally. That means officially according to Torah or mentally, right? According to the Torah that you have in you according to your mind state by extension by extension so in other words if i pray if i'm praying right or i'm in a prayer palal mentality i'm 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 looking at torah i'm looking at myself i'm lining my, i'm self-examining myself right but now if i extend it to do it for somebody else now right i'm seeking to examine their situation and then intercede according to what's official torah right on their behalf I'm, I'm supplicating this is what this is what they call a supplication so more correctly a prayer can also be a supplication that means you're pleading or begging on somebody else's behalf but when you're praying for yourself right you are judging in fact bro get those pictures remember the pictures i sent you the yeah. one um because this is a ideal opportunity right here to kind of bring this into the exhibit so we have this, this is a very important exhibit, brothers and sisters here on prayer, right? On prayer. Which one, um, do you have the one that says prayer and it has a French word? It says old French. It's, it's a black and white one. At the bottom, it says self-analysis. Or we can go to the other one that you went to. Remember that one? Yeah, I think I, yeah the one I like where it says um, self-analysis where it says... Um, in, in red? In red? Yeah, it's a self-analysis in red. That's okay, okay, favorite. okay. I'm right there. I'm right there. We're right there. So, um, go through. Let's go through this one here. The English word prayer is derived from the Latin term for prayer, which means precor, precor, right? P r e c o r, right? Which literally means to beg, begging Yahweh to fulfill our needs and desires uncontrollably in confusion without thought rhyme or reason excuse me is not to feel up right now why i brought that up right here is because now we're looking at this verse here where Jah is saying to to jeremiah jeremiah ermius 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 in the amharic ermius the latter day coiner by coptic greek into the amharic ermius but we would say it as jeremiah jeremiah my right? jeremiah 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 Right here, he's told not to pray. Right, and then the word prayer is the word tefillah. I just want to point it out to the eye. So in that same verse in Jeremiah eleven fourteen, the first word prayer is the verb palal, right, and the second word prayer with the er prayer is the word tefillah. Tefillah come from palal falal. Right, tefillah tefillah. Falal palal, right? And that word is the act of prayer. That's like that's like the the one is the verb and one is the noun. You know what I'm saying? Like the runner, the runner is the noun, right? And run is the verb, right? So we have tefila. Now, why it's important that we have this here is because this one here is going to break this down. Tefillah is derived from the Hebrew word. They have it here spelled as pilel, pilel. Well, that's when you start to break it down into nuanced verbs. But it's basically the, the PF, 
for, for, for the people, there's the P and the F, right, in the Hebrew. That's why sometimes you see where they have it as PH, because they'll notice that some words from other languages that might be a P in the Hebrew, like paro, paro, right? But in some cases, it can be faro. That's a little ancient thing, not to bore ones with that, but the word tefillah is from pilel, which means to judge, or palal, palal, pilel, right, to judge. And the act of engaging in tefillah, which is the act of prayer, is described in the reflexive. In other words, in the Hebrew, we take the word palal, and when you put it in the reflexive, lehit palel, lehit palel, is the sense of it reflexive means that the verb is acting on oneself or going back and forth so in other words it's like it's like to talk right i could talk and nobody be here i could just talk right but now because we are talking you know what i'm saying we're going back and forth it's like a back and forth so that's the sense of the verb the reflexive means that the action can be done to oneself or one and one can be doing it to each other, right? Almost like okay, a good a good example of prayer in the Bible is when is when Abraham asked Yahweh, 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 right? You remember when he asked him about if there'd be fifty righteous people, forty righteous people? You know what I mean? Where he kept going down in the number and going back and forth. A on Abraham's side, he was praying. He was praying. He was beseeching. Right through the see the difference between the word beg, right? Remember, remember I pointed out that the word in the Amharic was to beg. Priya is not begging. You see what I'm saying? Priya is not begging. There's another word for beg, right? And that other word for beg sometimes comes into a person's prayer, but it's not what prayer is. Priya is an act to judge or to analyze oneself or to be adjudicating on behalf of somebody else. So if I'm going to pray the king for the eye, right? You know, you're my brother, but, but you got on some trouble. So I'm praying the king who's our father, right? On your behalf. So I'm, I'm like judging in the sense of I'm going to court. Like the father is the judge, you know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to present a case where I am analyzing or judging your situation according to what's official Torah right or what is precedent and trying to get you a better a better a better deal like a better you know what I mean <laughs> situation it's basically like a lawyer in the sense where it says that Jesus Yeshua is our advocate it basically means he's our defense attorney it's like what Moses did on behalf of Israel what Israel did with the golden calf they were worthy of immediately immediate extermination because they broke their word and they broke their word in the worst way, right? However, some of them were destroyed, some of the ringleaders, but Jah already had cut off the people for going along with that, with that bullshit, you know, with that bullshit to say with that, with that, that, that shameful thing, that uckery, right? But what did Moses do? Moses took some of the attributes that Jah revealed himself and he appealed to the mercy side of the Kabbalistic tree of life. Because there's one side of the tree that is mercy and one side is, is severity. Right? So he went from the center to the mercy side. That's why of the 13 attributes of Jah, Moses only quoted about, I think, about six or so. He didn't quote ones like truth, the attribute of truth. You know what I'm saying? Because in truth, the Israelites were guilty. So that's why when John says to Moses, I have forgiven them because of your word. It comes out in the English too. I have forgiven them because of your word. It was almost like saying, Moses, you, you a good lawyer. You, you use my own words, but you selectively chose the mercy side by pointing my, you know, like whatever the lawyer brings up before the court or the judge, that is what we're arguing about. So sometimes you'll see in a court case where the, somebody will say, objection. And the other person will say, um, your honor, um, defense brought this in. Open the door for this. You've seen that before, right? In a court case where somebody says that the other party opened the door. That means instead of you sticking to what you should stick to, you got too free, free tongue and free footed 
that you mentioned something else. Now, once you mentioned it, that now allows that to be <laughs> admissible. So what Moses basically did is he drew on the mercy side of the revelation of, you know, when John said that he will show his backward parts and he revealed his nature and, 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 and the 13th attribute, Moses appealed to the mercy side. And that's why John says, says, I will forgive them because of your word. And when you, see that word, you see that word, the filler? When you first showed me this, right? And I looked through them. Part of the reason this guy and I like was my favorite of all the ones them is because of the one part where it says self-analysis, right? Mm. And it says to filler means self-analysis with a view of finding one's distance from Yahweh mm. and seeking mm. to improve it yes. by alignment of mental, physical, and verbal supplication. Word of my mouth and now, the meditation of my heart. <laughs> yes, sir. So now when I, I meditate on that, right, it reaffirms the sense that we as people, the INIs, need to really look within ourselves and reconnect that oneness within self. Because once we do that, <clears throat> once you reconnect the oneness of self within you, mm. you don't realize how much people you just reconnect with. You know? mm. Because it's a bunch of we walking around this earth, this earthly plane, in a unison step. You know? And we never meet each other, never see each other. Mm. But because we went inside and reconnect within that spiritual oneness, through our child and this heart, we walking in a one step. We get in the same downloads. Because look how this thing here show up here and this, <clears throat> this just vibes in. Mm. The brethren call me. And I sit in here, saying to myself, I need, I, I, we need to call this man because I have a question to ask about this prayer, this prayer thing, you check? Come to find out the man medicine and the same exact type of thing already. <laughs> mm, mm. <laughs> the same, so when we figure that out, we just say, uh, well, we just vibes in, so let we go. But that reconnection there is a, a very serious thing amongst us, that if we can really reconnect within ourselves, Find our true spiritual self and connect with that. We just connect with a mass of spiritual beings who have done the same. Mm. Who tread in for the victory of good over evil. Mm. You know, another, another important another important point that the eye I, I see that the eye brought out. I'm actually checking out the the Hebrew, the more Hebrew of the New Testament verse, the other verse where he says that he will pray. Um, he says he will pray the Father. Let's see right here. Let me see if I find this part right here. Is it in this verse or is it in this verse right here where he says that he will, um, yeah, he will pray the Father to send another, to send another comforter. Now, this is something interesting of, of what I'm seeing right here. Aye, aye. Where he says, I will ask, um, um, the father, um, well, here, yeah, 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 here says, um, Wa'ani and I, Wa'ani, Esh, Esh, uh, Esh Allah, Esh Allah, Esh Allah, Esh Allah, I will, s wow, oh, okay, I will ask, yeah, Esh, Esh Allah, Esh Allah, Esh Allah, from the Sha'al, Sha'al, Sha'al mean to ask. It basically is like lemonade, to ask. So it can have ask, but in a more intensive, you know, like somebody asking very intensively is not just asking anymore, now they're begging. You know what I'm saying, how words go? It's like, I could ask you something, you say, no. Nah. I could keep asking and keep, oh, come on, uh, give this to me, I need this, you know what I mean? And that's not now begging. But it's still beginning from ask. So the word here in the Hebrew is not the word for prayer, it's the word from shalah, shalah, um it means like um it's kind of interesting because the name shaul 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 
the name Saul in Hebrew means ask. That which is ask is a Shaul. So here Christ is saying in John 14 and 16, right? Because he's reasoning on a tefillah. So I wanted to just clarify that the word is not, is not prayer in the sense of prayer, right? And so we have here the Hebrew is esh, 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 eshala. Eshala. Eshala is to, to ask like eliminalo in them heart. He says, may I be. But the difference is this from the Hebrew it says, and I will ask from my father. Right? The other one, the Amharic says, Abin, Abin, Elemnalo. Here it says, Eshala, may I be. May from I be. May I be, may I be. I will ask from my father. Wahua Yitain Lakem and he will send. He will send the 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 Menachem. The Menachem. You know like the word the name Menachem? Menachem? You heard the name Menachem, right? Yeah. Like uh, it's really in Hebrew Menachem. Menachem. It actually means comforter. It's like the name Nehemiah. It's from the same root. Menachem. It means comforter. But here the Greek term was paraklit. Paraklete, like the parakletos. And parakletos in the Greek mean one who goes alongside for support and strengthen. So, so basically. Say again. Say that word again. Oh, oh. Per, per, parak. Okay, they say, they say parakletos. 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 Yeah, that, that's the way they say it from the Greek. But in the Hebrew of the New Testament, it says paraklete. Paraklete. We say it in the Mark as. Parakletos, parakletos. Parakletos, parakletos. Yeah, the par parakletos. para, para mean to go along like parallel, para, and parak. How's it go down here? Let's just break this word down, the comforter. Parakletos, para means to go alongside, and and kletos, kletos come from kala, kala, like to be called, almost like called to go alongside, one who is called so it's two part word. Para is like alongside, like parallel, right? And Kletos come from Kala. You remember the word Kala before? The call? The word for call, Kala? Kletos come from Kala in the Greek. So para Kletos, para Kletos means like one who goes alongside because they call. Somebody called to like go alongside. You know, almost like if I'm going, I say, bro, you, you tried with I. And so you you walking with me, you like the parakletos. You I called you to to go alongside. <laughs> over us, over us, over us. You know, so 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 that would be the Isla Irit. That's what Yeshua is saying. I just wanted to clarify that so that we know that the King James says pray, right? That I will pray. The Greek brings out the sense of I will ask, like maybe even beg. The Hebrew brings out, I will ask, and the Amharic, Lemanalo, brings out the sense, I will ask. I'm pointing to that because that's different than pray. You know, pray is like, um, like, 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 uh, for example, praise. Praise, basically, you could, if you praise somebody, you could tell them how wonderful they are, the wonderful things they've done, but you can also thank them. Although Thanksgiving is literally saying thank you. You know what I mean? Thanksgiving is literally saying thank you. You know what I'm saying? But in praise, you sometimes have praise and thanksgiving going together. Even though Thanksgiving is one offering and praise is another. You know what I'm saying? They can be brought together. I'm just I'm not trying to say that these things are limited in their own in their own bubble, but you know how if we want, if we're seeking to get something of the Almighty, we probably put everything in our favor. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna have some praise. You're gonna have some worship. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna have some offering, some thanksgiving. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're gonna. So, so that's these words mean something in their own individual. But what happens in the English is the English translate by using one word, and the one word confuse our meaning because we're used to the word pray in the sense of oh please father god please give me this please do this for me and the next thing about prayer is prayer generally speaking prayer generally speaking was personal that that's the part that keeps getting lost in the translation prayer 
Notice Christ says, I will pray the Father. Well, he don't mean that prayer, but he basically means I will ask, I'll beseech, I will ask, and he will do this, right? And he's going to give you this. I'm going to beseech on your behalf. And remember that in this whole section, he's saying, if you do these things and you love me and you do them in my name, you know what I mean? I will support you. I will like kind of like be a, a witness. You know what I mean? Almost like collateral. Like collateral is like the parakletos. I'm going to go along with it and support, you know, what you're asking. But in a sense of prayer, prayer was an internal thing. Like you pointed out self-analysis. So when you saw Yehudi in Yeshua's time going into the synagogue or going into the local church, which is a synagogue, or going into the temple, praying... That was being vainglorious because now you are uttering your personal business here in the public instead of going to God the Father in private. You know what I'm saying? In other words, when we come together to chant Isaacs, right? We all come together to chant Isaacs. Like the different songs, different chants. We're all going to chant it. And, you know, with our heart and with our soul and with our mental, you know what I mean? Hopefully being aligned. You know what I'm saying? But now, if somebody now stops the eyes and is standing up there praying about their own personal business, what part do we have to play in that? We can feel sorry for them. You know what I'm saying? That's why Christ says that they already got their reward. Because you're not going to say, I don't got no money to pay my bills and everything. We're in the bingy. We're going to be chanting eyes. And the eyes was like the, 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 the Jewish, what they call the Amidah. The standing, the standing benediction. The standing benediction, we all stand and we chant psalms and we chant certain areas of the scripture to remind us of what our duty is and we give thanks to the Almighty with like one voice, you know, almost like bingy, and then we go to our residences. Now, if you want to pray after that, you remember how when Christ points out the two men, the Pharisee and the publican, the Pharisee lift up his head and saying, oh God, I'm not like other men. You know what I mean? I'm not like this other man here. You know, I do this, I do that, I do all the religious things. While the publican, the one, the, the, the Jew that worked for like the city or worked for the government, you know what I mean? That had a government job, you know what I mean? <laughs> he basically put his head down and would not lift up his head. And he said, forgive me, Father. Quietly, he said, forgive me, Father, for I'm a ucker. I'm a lacker. I'm a sinner. I'm falling short. I know I'm supposed to be hitting these marks, but I'm, you know what I mean? Forgive me. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he said, which one of the two men went to his home justified? The man who prostrated himself. The man who humbled him. The man, he said, the man would not even lift up his head. He would not even lift up his head, but he said, he said, forgive me. All right? Let me see if I can find that verse, because this is a good example of Yeshua's point of view. My vis a vis and regarding, you know, regarding prayer. Let's see right here. Let me see if I uh, if I can bring this up. Right. Okay. Let me get the publican, the publican, and the was he a Pharisee? This said the Pharisee, right? I think he must have been a Pharisee, a Pharisee and the publican. Right. A publican. Let me see right here. The Pharisee and okay, right here the Pharisee and the publican. Say why you eat with uh, murmur, saying why you eat. Okay, yeah, here we go. Luke 18 and 10. Luke 18, 10. Like those two men went into the temple. That, that's our that's our main, you say our main, our main place. You know, like where the ark symbolically was supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? Uh. And to pray, right? Now the pray here is not that other word. Remember that other word? That other word was um, Ario, or Ario, or, 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 or no, Erotes, Erotes, something like Erotes in the Greek, right? But that was basically to ask, to beseech, or to to supplicate. This word here in the Greek is is pro um, prosu ko ie. Okay, that's I'm reading the phonetics. Let me read the Greek right here. It was prosekomai, prosekomai, prosekomai. What does that sound like? Prosecomai. Prosecomai. Think about it for a moment in English. Remember, a lot of these things come down into English, in other words. Prosecomai. Prose prosecute. 
prosecute almost prosecute my prosecomai. Prosecomai is the Greek word to offer prayers, but notice how it sounds like prosecute. Because that's what a prayer is. Remember, we went to the Hebrew, the palal of tefillah. It's 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 to it's to judge. The pilel hitpalel is to judge, right? To 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 judge, to judge on behalf of one, to adjudicate or to mediate on somebody else's behalf. Or if you are praying for yourself, it is self-analysis. Because before you even open your mouth, you have to first check yourself. You know what I mean? That's why Christ says, love one another, right? And the word says, love your neighbor as thyself. You see what I'm saying? That's why prayers begin not... Some people got a bunch of prayers for other people. But, but they're not really praying for themselves in the terms of tefillah. They're not self-analyzing themselves. So here we have pros. The word pros is, 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 is like the preposition of forward to forward to to pertain to and the second word echo my echo my is they bring this out right here interesting they said the primary word here is to wish right to pray to will to pray to will to wish this is how they bring it out from the greek right right to pray to will to wish right so these two men went to the temple to pray the one a pharisee and the other a publican the Pharisees stood. Now remember when he talked about standing? When Christ talked about you and, and y'all standing and making long prayers and everything? Right? The Pharisees stood. This is the Amida, the standing, what they call the standing prayer. And he prayed thus within himself. Notice, within himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, as extortioners, unjust, adulterers. Or even as this publican. Now, pretty judgmental, eh? Yovas, and my bad, brothers and sisters, for not going here because notice how it's much clearer. And so we have to refer to the word because our memory sometimes might be what memory is. And so we got the word, right? And he preserved his word. The Pharisees stood and he prayed within himself. Now, notice, Pharisees had a lot of things that were right, but overall, at that time, they were wrong. Now, he stood as we're to stand. Because many can't stand in the judgment. And he prayed as he should. Prosecumai, right? Tefillah, right? Like this, within himself. That he did correctly. He called Elohim, the judgment name of God, right? Elohim, the judge. I thank thee that I am not as other men. But notice how he, after he says, I thank thee, he should have stopped. He should have stopped. He should have, he should have stood, prayed. Like this, within, notice what it says, within himself. You see that word right there, within himself? Yeah. He didn't pray, he said, hey, everybody look at me. Oh, Lord God of, you know, no, no, no. He prayed within himself, saying, Elohim, I thank thee. He should have stopped right there. Because we do have a prayer like that. It's a prayer um, among Yehudi, like a morning prayer, like, um, you know, um, um, like, like, I thank thee. It's basically, it basically begins off, I thank thee. Ani mode. Ani mode. Basically, ani mode. Like, I'm thanking you. I'm thank you. Ani mode. Boom. You know what I mean? That's a good prayer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? But then he goes on that he said he thanks Elohim now for this reason. Now he's trying to mix up Elohim, Haile him in his mix up. He says that I am not as other men. Now, you know something's wrong when you are praying now to the power of the Almighty and you got to talk about other men. Yeah. Right? He, he, you, he, you're thanking Xiaobi that you're not like others. What? Right? And he says, extortioners. Uh-oh. Unjust. Uh-oh. Not righteous. Adulterers. Uh-oh. Or even as this publican. Now he's talking about the man standing next to him in himself. Hypocrite. Listen, we both are praying before the ark, before the altar. You know what I'm saying? And one of us is praying about the next guy. Like, I thank you, Ja, that I'm not like this boy over here and these other sinners, these uckers. You know what I'm saying? You know? Because he's a publican, but he's his brethren. You know what I mean? But see, the Pharisee took being a Pharisee as his job. You see what I'm saying? See, Pharisee meant to separate. 
right? To be separate, right? And to be and to be scrupulous in attention to details. It was a but good for thing. Those, for those same people, uh, those are the ones that, um, like I said earlier, they like to go to church and read the Bible and say that they, you know, and some of them truly believe that they... Are not like other people. Yeah, while they're doing their foolishness. So <laughs> what I want to do right now is go to um, Isaiah 59. <laughs> okay, give me give me a keyword. Yes. Give me a keyword. Yeah, Isaiah 59 right now. Uh, let me see keyword. What should be the keyword right here? Uh, oh, 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 read read part of a sentence. Read part of a sentence there. Well, I start to say, behold, the Lord's hand is not short. Oh, 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 okay, 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 okay. Hand and short. Okay, I'm gonna go hand and short because hand and short doesn't occur in every verse, right? It doesn't occur that often. Hand and short. Okay, and Isaiah, Isaiah, what, 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 59. 50, there we go, I got it, I got it, got yeah. it. Yeah, the go. first, the, well, basically the first four verses, if you feel like going any further, go ahead. Behold, Yahweh's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, neither his ear heavy that he cannot hear, but your iniquities, okay, the word iniquities is avon, modern Hebrew avon. A, 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 a wane, a wane, a wane, a vain, a vaughn. It means perversity, like moral, moral perversity, right? Have separated between you and your power, your Elohim, and your sins, your uckeries, your chata, your missing, right? Your missing. I'm showing this to the people right here. Chata, you see what chata? Chata means to miss the way, to go wrong, to incur guilt, forfeit, right? Um, then your sins have hid his face, his face, his, his perception, his, yeah, from you, right? That he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue have muttered perverseness. Perverseness, avla, ever, right? Verse four, none calleth for justice, which is sedek, sedek, right? None call for zedek. Nor any pleadeth for truth, for for emuna, for emuna, for emet, right? They trust in vanity, right? Tohu, like nothingness, like um, you know, it says the earth was was void and without form, right? Uh, void, tohu, tohu, like formless. They trust in vanity, the, the unformed shape, and speak lies. They conceive. Uh oh, conceive. That sounds like conception. They conceive mischief and bring forth, and they give birth to iniquity. Right? Aven. Yeah, Aven. Trouble, wickedness, sorrow. Yeah. Aven. Yeah. A vanity. Yeah, yeah. So he's telling ones why he won't hear. He's telling why he. It's not that he cannot hear. Okay. Right? <laughs> Why right, that he cannot save, his arm can save, and his ear it can hear, but he separated that because of a bunch of nonsense. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a bunch because he's the Almighty, right? So the Almighty has has all might not to hear if he if he, if, he, if he don't want to hear. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, can you imagine that? You it, it's an interesting it's an interesting kind of phenomenon, right? That the Almighty, who's able to do all things, can also not hear. If he chooses not to hear, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Cut off your link. You know what I mean. You can still, we can still be talking. You know what I mean. We can still be talking. <laughs> yeah, you could talk all day. He ain't hearing nothing you saying. But he's listening to somebody else who who didn't even open their mouth. He hear their heart. You know what I mean. He could hear their heart. That's what says the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart. That meant that our mouth. Should agree with our heart. You know what I mean? Over here to Isaiah, um, in Isaiah chapter one, four, where he say, um, "Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with it, with iniquity, a seed of evil doers, children that are corruptors." What chapter? Have, that's chapter one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. Chilling at verse 4. Corrupt is gone. Yeah, yeah, they are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One 
of Israel to anger. They are gone away backwards. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot to the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and purity and uh, and and pu uh, and, and purifying purifying arm so, sores. Wow! <laughs> they uh. have not been closed, neither bound up, neither modified. Yeah, mollified, yeah. Mollified with oh, ointment. You know, you know, it's like a wound. No, nothing's been put on it. Nothing has been. It, it's just getting worse and worse. You know what I mean? It's not treated, untreated. Uh, untreated, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's why the next verse is kind of interesting because this can apply to Ethiopia and also to, it says, your country is desolate. Your cities are burnt with fire. Your land strangers devour in your presence. Even looking at Africa in a bigger picture, you know, it is desolate as overthrown by strangers, right? And the daughter of Zion, the more speaking about Ethiopia, is left the Horn of Africa as a cottage in a vineyard, right? A cottage in a vineyard as a large in a garden of cucumbers as a besieged city. And that's where the verse where Paul quotes it from verse 9, except Yahweh Sabaot had left us, left to us a very small remnant. We should have been as Sodom and we should have been like to Gomorrah. You know, it's basically saying that there was that remnant and that's who the Jews were. Speaking of the Yehudi, the black Jews of Yeshua's time. That's what that New Testament is a statement to. Right, that while the rest of them was taken out of the way, Israel was taken out of the way. There was there was still that remnant, and even among that remnant, there was enough like the like the Pharisees and the scribes and the rest of them that had to be taken out the way too, you know. And many of the people who were listening to them, as it says, hear the word of Yahweh, your rulers of Sodom, give ear to the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. You see, it wasn't talking about the people. Remember how Yeshua talks. You know how Yeshua talks? He quotes actually Isaiah, Yeshaya a lot. And we can hear him kind of, when he talk about Capernaum, you know, and he talk about like Sodom, it'd be better for these other cities in the past, right? Than for the ones who had seen and heard, right? The Bain Elohim, the son of the power, you know what I mean? And had, you know, had refused. That's why he goes on to burn them more about the whole priest temple sacrifices to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices to me huh. say if Yahuwah I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats now this is a startling thing because a lot of them actually believe as a lot of them may believe today that this is what he he desires like the the nowadays the other sacrifice. jews yeah the other jews are looking to rebuild the temple so they can build do the sacrifices again that's what the third temple is to them for us but they even but they even starting to put it in movies now because they have a movie coming out right now right i can't remember the name of the movie and i don't really want to plug the name anyway but um the concept is um, the world is about to end if this particular family don't sacrifice one of the family. They have to sacrifice one of the family's life as a blood sacrifice in order for the world to be saved. Hmm. And while they debating whether they're going to do it and then the fighting that they ain't going to do it, all kind of catastrophe is going on on the earth. Planes are falling out the air, oh, tidal wow. waves, all that's kind crazy. of you know, tsunamis, all kind of crazy stuff is going on on the earth. Oh wow, that's crazy. But in order for this to stop, this particular family have to sacrifice one of their family members. Mm, 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 so mm. when I see that concept, they said, no, man, I got to see this movie when it come out, man. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. So, they, so they're already putting these kind of things out to get the people to have that in the mental already so you ain't too shocked when it start to happen, you know? 
we done showing you that these things in in movies and shows and you know we you know we desensitize you to certain things before it actually happened you know so yeah. like you can say when you say about the the, the, the you know the building of the temple in Jerusalem to start sacrifice again yeah the third yeah, temple yeah it's the third temple basically it shows the split between the Phari the Pharisees that oppose Yeshua and modern Judaism and the true way right of the of the of the of the Yehudi right which is more according to the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews where we recognize the son of the woman according to the Enochian prophecy to be Yeshua in that first advent what we call the king of kings Christ you know what I'm saying and the, and, the, and the true second temple is the temple of the body. You know what I'm saying? That, that in other words, the, the Yehudi, the Jews, many of them modern Jews, they think that the, 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 the third temple is them have to get rid of the Muslim thing. You know, up there in Israel, you know, the Dome of the Rock, and yeah. rebuild Solomon's temple. Many of them, like the, the modern Jews, Ashkenazi, they believe that that has to be done, right, so that the Messiah can come. Right, so you you once you just understand that, you can understand what's at stake over there, amongst a lot of ones who who call themselves Jews. You know the J word. You know what I'm saying over there, and then you can see that it was the same thing that they were glorying about in the time of Robeno Yeshua. Remember Yeshua was talking about and the temple. You know, like remember he was talking about the temple and and and, and if you break it down, he build it up, and they thought he was talking about. You know, they thought he was talking about the temple temple, the building, but they were, he was talking about the temple of his body. You know that verse right there where it's talking about the temple of his body? It, it's, it's, it's right over here in John, in John 2 and 21. John 2 and 21. When he was talking to them, so what, what happened is that modern Judaism has a lot in common with teachings of the Pharisees you know and the, the difference comes in you know what I mean comes in with Yeshua hold, hold the line for a moment I'm gonna return I heard the, I read it come with it come with it again right there John 2 21 John 2 21 but he speak to the temple of his body of the temple yeah yeah of the temple of his body yeah ah so so when we look at this particular verse right here right you know and it says the then said the jews right the yehudi now in this time here's what a lot of people can't understand is that in this time it was a lot of black jews he was talking to see this is what people don't really see oh because they ethiopian jews or jews that would would, would favor the ethiopian <laughs> you know in the whole modern you know ratio this world you know that we have today you know because what Yeshua said in verse 19, he answered and said to, to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Now notice the, the debate now among modern Jews, especially religious one, like the Haredi, the Ati, the religious segments, is to build the third temple. So, so, so if, you do, if you do any research or any of the listeners do any research and look up the third temple, Jewish third temple you'll find a lot of their ideas but those ideas basically we could say started after the the new covenant time you see what I'm saying and what Yeshua is showing in a true way it's not about a temple like the prophets say that's made with hands you know what I'm saying that temple they, that temple they gonna cause them a serious problem well, there's a. Realize what's going on. The temple gonna cause them a serious problem because the person who they gonna put in charge to be the head of that day, that's the person you need to be worried about and stay away from while you're trying to run to go to that temple. Just watch some. Yeah, it sounds a lot like the Left Behind movies. Remember the whole Left Behind brand. The Left Behind movies talk about that too. I remember I saw one where some guy was trying to sit on top of an Ark of the Covenant. You know, in one of these movies. And this is where a lot of the, the end time speculations come from. You know what I mean? From these main points. You know? But we should not even be focused on, on the stone building because we already know what the prophets say. 
and, mm -hmm. and going back to I, I think it's Isaiah that talk about or Jeremiah the temple of the Lord is these the temple of the Lord is these and he's saying where's the temple of the Lord right that means that this idea that Yeshua brings forward is not some new thing as some Jews would tell themselves right but actually is the true Yehudi you know what I mean is the true Judaic perspective because then said the Jews right 40 and six years was this temple in building right because remember the religious authority it's like his majesty a christian and we had christianity over here but it's not the same thing people don't know that people people confuse that because they say his majesty talk about jesus or yesus and and it's a christian nation and the history they think it's the same thing it's not the same thing from the roots you see what I'm saying? And the same thing with these Jews here, as it says, then said the Jews, right? Speaking about the Pharisees and, and the religious thought of the day. Like when we say, behold, Hila Selassie, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. Other black people and other Christians will say, no, they'll show you some painting that somebody made up of somebody coming out the heavens on a horse. When, you know? when we got a real thing sitting here in front of us. Exactly. But, but that's the difference. I'm trying to show you the same thing that can happen in religion when there's a prevailing theology that goes wrong. You know what I mean? It's like the good theology, sometimes people don't, don't like it because it requires too much from them. But bad theology somehow seems to go on and on. It becomes very popular. Even though people don't understand it, they still agree with it. You remember when they was telling everybody to, to say crucify him? It said that the people were afraid of the Pharisees and the religious Jews, the leaders. So they went along with saying, crucify Yeshua and give us Barabbas. So even in the narrative, it shows how the influence of the religious leaders can be a very dangerous thing. See, in the real Jewish Judaic point of view, we all are, how can I say, um, knowledgeable. You see what I'm saying? This, this can only work when we all are knowledgeable. So if I go wrong, my brother can check me because he knows what's right. Right? And he'll see I go wrong. You know what I'm saying? That's how, it's not that, oh, just a certain group of guys over here called the priests, they have all the scrolls and we go like little children, you know, to say, ask little questions. No. <laughs> it, it was never to, to be so. Right? And what Yeshua was doing, he was demo democratizing that knowledge of what the Pharisees and the scribes had almost an exclusive understanding of it. Yeshua was simplifying it, right? Although he knew the details, he often simplified it into basic, you know, you know, simplicity for the people to get. You know, love one another as, as, as I have loved you. you. You see me as being very loving? Well, love each other in the same way. You know what I mean? <laughs> you love me? Oh, you, you really love me? You, I like you really love me. Well, keep keep the commandments. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then the Father will love you. It was always a, like a kind of a, I would almost call it a quid pro quo. You do this, right? And, and this is just like the Torah. You do, if you do keep this, then I shall do such and such. But if you don't do that, well, what, what, what do you expect? That's, what, that's why you didn't answer their prayers. Because they was not doing the first part, but they wanted to give sacrifice because they knew that, that it was like a barbecue. You know, sacrifice on a large part was like barbecue. You know what I'm saying? On a certain level. It was like good eating for some. Depends on what kind of sacrifices it was. Right? And burning incense. All the burning incense. You know, like, like I and I, burning aishans. Burning aishans can be very pleasurable. But if your mind is stayed on fuckery, excuse my language, you know what I'm saying? then it's vain. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like somebody uh, burning the good kush, the good herb, that good um, 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 sativa. You know what I mean? And then occupying their mind with akri. Uh, that's not... A, the incense was not used in a holy way. Now, Ja understands that those in the world doing that, but then when we call his name and doing the same thing, uh-oh. So they say, 40 and 6 years was this temple in building, and will thou rear it up in 3 days? In 3 days. 
right? So, so they were looking at the temple, the temple, the temple. That even Christ was talking about the temple. One stone won't remain on the next one. So that shows. That's also another reason why some some J words don't like, you know, um, J E S U S or Yeshua. You know what I'm saying? But that kind of mentality there with that temple thing where he tell them that's kind of a form of stuck in 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 a type of um, subconscious idolatry that I don't even think some of them realize they're dealing with it. But 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 he but he pointed that out when he talking about the temple with the gold and all of that and like he was like which one is more valuable, you know what I mean the gold or because they, they they lost sight of what the temple was what it was is like us today a lot of our people today like I wanted to do about the Rastafari get a get a um reality check and everything like that is that um we also have that this kind of a general idea, you know what I mean. Almost like um, we have to agree with every other black people. And I say that because what happened to um, um, black and white down presser? If we only get the white down presses, what about the... <laughs> you know what I mean? We're going to end up in the same situation again. So we need to look for his truth. Ah, spirit and truth. truth. You know, that's I why I, I don't care who the truth coming from. I, know. I just hear sort narrative, you know, if I don't want to hear such and such from the Gentiles, then I don't want to hear nothing they have to say. I, I can't have X with you, you know, based on our history and stuff with them people. I can't have X with your point of view, that or that. But if that same Gentile leg will say something that is truth, I appreciate that truth. Let that truth be said. Let that truth be known. Jew or Gentile? Let the truth be known. Let it be told. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uncle, well, we have to recognize that we're in this dispensation now. See, before Yeshua and before 70 AD and all that, maybe we could rock it like that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe yeah. we could rock it like that back in back in those days before, those days. Yeah, before Israel, the ten tribes went into captivity, Judah back and forth to Babylon, and then the crucifixion of the Messiah. Yeah, we could rock it like that. But now we're under a different dispensation that the Old Testament points to would be the time. Remember we talked about the son of the stranger? The sons of strangers, right? Yeah. That he would give them a a, 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 a greater name. Than, than those of sons and daughters if they do if they join themselves to him you see because the salvation I, I, I caught a meme today where it said the salvation of the Gentiles depends on who really is Israel think about it for a moment the salvation of the, these other nations and nationalities depend on who is real Israel who is real Israel because if the nations choose wrongly, then it's a it's, it's destruction. Think about it for a moment. Destruction for all. For all, especially for all who choose. You yeah. know what I mean? But now, this is one of the reasons why this whole whole um, black and J word thing is 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 so is so much in the news. You know what I'm saying? Think about it. It's so much like a hot subject matter, and they're trying to use the system to crack down. Right on even one saying that yeah black people and, and the Israelites you know what I'm saying don't want to make that connection you see what I'm saying because it provides salvation to the nations you know what I'm saying and the salvation to the nations is Israel being saved the real Israel being saved you know what I'm saying that provides salvation to the nations in other words salvation right came to Israel, the, the, the Jews, the, the Yehudi, they refused, but a remnant still kept with it. So the remnant that kept with it is still of the Jews and of Israel. You know what I'm saying? But then... I want you, I want you to go to, um, while you're reasoning there, go ahead and, uh, and reason, but go to um, Psalms 34 and hit, um, when you get a chance, hit 12 to 19. That's the one that says fret not? No, that's Psalm 37. Is, uh... Let's see. I, I, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it right here. Okay. Okay. Here. 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 Uh, I'm gonna go to 37 and then back it up. To there we go. Okay. 
I'm at Psalm 37, um, 34, 34, I got it. Abimelech, that's the one that had Abimelech. When he changed his behavior. <laughs> Before Abimelech. I laugh because the word behavior is taste. The word behavior is taste. Yeah, but 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 but, but, but which verse? Which verse? Uh, 12 to 19. Break that down. Based on what you were just saying right now, that, that fall right in line with that right. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? Question. Keep thy tongue from evil, from hurt, from harmful, from unkind, and thy lips from speaking guile. From speaking mirma, like deceitfully deceiving, you know, like false lips. Yes. Um, verse uh, 14 Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Go on. Yeah, go to 19. Okay. The eyes of Yahweh are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. Their shawa shout. The face of Yahweh is against them that do evil, that practice evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, they shriek, and Yahweh heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Notice says the righteous cry, and the Hebrew is like shriek, right? Like somebody shriek, ah, you know what I mean? But even though it's not a prayer, he hear them. You know, he know he know his sheep's voice. Verse 18, Yahweh is nigh, is near to them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit uh, to the heart, to the broken of heart and to the contrite of spirit. Verse 19, many, enough, enough are the afflictions of the righteous, but Yahweh Jehovah Yahweh delivereth him out of them all. And the word delivereth is the Hebrew natsal. Natsal means to snatch. I just want to point it out. That word deliver sometimes is a natsal. Natsal. Natsal means like to snatch. You know what I mean? So when, when Jacob said that he had wrestled, he seen Elohim face to face and his life was preserved. In the Hebrew, it says, and his, and his soul was snatched. And it was almost like, like you snatch something out of harm's way. His psyche was snatched, you know what I mean? Out of harm's so, way. It's, it's a interesting bringing out so, the Hebrew. <laughs> so whether Jew or Gentile, this principle applies. Well, it says what man, in a, in a, in a general sense of what man, right now the man here is ish right and so ones could argue that it's saying a more mature a higher man but it doesn't limit the man to being a hebrew or israelite right it basically is a general for all for all people because it says the remembrance calls the remembrance of them from the earth that means the earth earth wherever land land is you know what i'm saying and it's faces against them that do evil the do evil when it says like do evil, or it speaks about that in that way, it means not like you did an evil thing, but it's speaking of those who practice evil. I'm just bringing that out because the translation sometimes, you don't get it when you're reading the translation, like to do evil is like it, it, to, to uh, habitual, the practices of evil. You know what I mean? The practices of evil, it faces against them. To cut off the remembrance of them, you know, the practice, the evil practice from the earth. So, yeah, this is speaking about Jew and Gentile. And I want to share this one with you since we're on this particular point. Right. Um, let's uh, I'm going to go to the nature. Right. Um, Galatians 2 and 15. Galatians 2 and 15. Now this is um, well, well, well. This is this is this is this is an interesting part. But tell me when you're there, the Galatians, because this is talking about Paul and Peter 
And I love what, 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 what Paul says to you Peter. Said, you said 2 and 15? Yeah, 2 and 15 is the main verse, yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm there. What, what, what does it say? Can you read it? We who are Jews by nature are not sinners of the Gentiles. Go on, because the comma there. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the work of the law. For the work of the law shall no flesh be justified. No, and it was the works of the law, the practice of the works of the law in the context of the Yehudi was all those sacrifices and doing those things. Because look, the Torah says this, and therefore it says a blood sacrifice, not, not blood, but it says an animal is killed and the blood is, you know what I mean? That they were, you know, by the works of the law. Because it breaks down what the, you know, what the works of the law are. You know, those things that the Torah says to be done. You know, like 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 the 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 ritualistic practices, right? So when it says works of the law, right, is not saying just the law, but what are the works, the doings of the law. You know what I mean? And the doings of the law is what Yeshua points out to them. You know, that they he says, observe what the Pharisees observe, but don't do after their works. He said, observe what they observe. They observe reading the Torah, studying the scripture. We should observe that. But don't do it after their works because they say one thing and do something else. They'll see where it says those mercy go for judgment. But we see in the case of Yeshua where they were always trying to like, you know what I mean? Condemn him because he was showing the hypocrisy. Oh, on the word hypocrisy, you know what hypocrite means? To wear masks. You, you know, back in the actors' day in the Greek, they had those two masks, the happy face and the sad face? Yeah. That's where the word hypocrite comes from. It's like hypocrite is like somebody who, who wears a mask. Like, like I'm sad, but I put on a happy face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You exactly. know what I mean? And that's like guile. That's, that's all go to the script to talk about in the Psalm 34, like guile, like deceptive, you know, by, you know, by, by duplicity. So here... Here, uh, anamu. Hmm? Anamu. Anamu, anamu or something like that. Because, because notice this section here, let's just go back a couple of verses. And I'll just try to speed through a couple of verses because it says in verse 12, For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. So here Paul is saying that, you know, sometimes we as Yehudi, and even maybe we sometimes even as Rastafari, if we understand what the roots are, can be sometimes in our own way hypocritical. And we need to cut that out. You know, we need to cut that out. Because here Paul is saying right here, he's saying, um, let me go back to verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Right. Verse 12. For before that certain came, certain ones came from Jacob, from James. He did eat with the Gentiles. He ate with those who are of other nations who had faith in the Moshiach, Yeshua, right? But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them that were of the circumcision. You know what I'm saying? To speak about those who were Yehudi, who were of the circumcision. Right then, it goes on to verse thirteen, and the other Jews. You know that that's why we started to use the term other Jews, and the other Jews dissembled. Dissemble. What is dissemble? Dissemble is to act hypocritically. Is to act like the hypocrite. To act hypocritically. Right. And a hypocrite is one to take up another's statement in reference to what one has decided for oneself. To impersonate anyone. To impersonate. To play a part. To, to simulate, to feign, to pretend, pretentious, you know, to play the false part. So it says that the other Yehudi, they dissembled likewise. They, so when, when, the, when the other brothers from Jerusalem, from Jamaica, from Jerusalem wasn't there, right? 
they pretended, I mean, I mean, I mean they ate with the Gentiles in a, a fellowship. But when they heard that the brothers came in from out of town, from Jerusalem, you know what I mean? They pretend like they didn't know these Gentiles, the same ones they was bunning my, with the white roster, you know what I mean? Or a roster of another nation, you know what I mean? And supping and eating ital and all of that, you know what I'm saying? But then when the brethren came, <laughs> you know, from Jerusalem to say, like when they came from Jamaica, you know what I mean? Yeah, they went one Yeah, they pretended like they didn't know them. In so much that Barnabas, verse 13, also was carried away with their dissimulation, with their hypocrisy. Even Barnabas. So Paul is saying, Champ, man, you guys was playing that game so heavy. Even one like Barnabas got caught up. And, 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 and he also pretended like he didn't know the Gentiles when the brothers came from Jerusalem, right? So Paul is leading up to verse 15. So we can understand why he says that we are Jews by nature. And we're Jews by nature. We don't have to pretend. We don't have to, you know, do anything to pretend to be. You know, but when I saw that they walk not uprightly, according to the truth, uh-oh, what's that key word? The truth of the gospel of the good news. I said to Petro, right? He said to Petro, to Peter, before them all, if thou being a Yehudi, if you being a Yehudi, a Judahite, a Judean, livest, if you livest after the manner of the Gentile, so... You call yourself a Rasta, right? And you're living in foreign, right? In America, in the city, New York, or Texas, or California, you know, or England, you know what I mean? Or France, or wherever, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're living, you're, you're a Rastafari, you're a Yehudi, but you're living after the manner, you know? And, and let me say, you're, you're, you're a black Jew, let me put it like that, you know what I'm saying? But you're living after the manner of the other nations that you live around. Right? And not as the Yehudi do. And you're not doing what the real, you know what I mean? And we get into the roots of Rastafari. Why compellest thou? Like why you're making, you know, you know that word compel? I be thinking about when they do the exorcism in their movies. I compel you in the name of, you know what I mean? <laughs> why compellest thou the Gentiles, the other nations, the non-ethnic, you know, people, right, who want a fellowship with the Yehudi or with ethnic Rastafari, I and I, we the black sheep of the house of Israel, to live as do the Jews, right? That's why he says, we are Yehudi by nature. You know, you know that sounds like when they say naughty by nature. Well, no, no, we're Yehudi by nature. You know what I mean? That's our nature and not sinners of the Gentiles. Here's the point I want to make, is that this is a part, this verse here, you see the commas, so he's saying that we're Yehudi by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles. And we know that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Because we're Yehudi, we know that a man is not justified by the works of the law. By doing what the law says to do, that doesn't make him righteous. You know what I mean? It's good for him to do properly what the, what the Torah says to do. But by doing the things the Torah says to do, doesn't make you righteous. You, you know what I'm saying? Because... A Gentile can come in and say he want to be the high priest. You see what I'm saying? And he want us to teach him Torah, right? Now, can a Gentile become the high priest of Israel? See, he want to do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, but he doesn't know. We should know that he can't because as he reads Torah, it says anyone who's a stranger that come near the altar gets bunned. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, if you're not of, you know what I'm saying? So the context of this is saying that by nature, we don't have to pretend. By nature, you still can be a Yehudi and those same Gentiles. What? But, but what it was, it was becoming a shame of the other people. This kind of brings us to the whole white Rasta, right? Because I think the white Rasta is different than other Rasta far from other nations because of ethnic Israel, black Israel's experience with white people. You know what I'm saying? So the whole white Rasta thing is a different level than every other. I notice most other nations who are Rastafari, the same issues don't come up as with those who have some affinity with being white. And part of it has to do with, you know, of course, the system of things and what we've experienced. And, you know, like, and how we might be taking our... I can't say our feelings 
You know what I mean? Instead of the faith of the gospel of the King of Kings Christ. You know what I'm saying? If we take the faith of the gospel of the King of Kings Christ, then whether it's black or white, uckers, right? They will be removed. You know what I'm saying? You know, because there are some white Jews, right? That may be good Rastafari, but there's others that won't be. There's some blacks that will be good Rastafari and some not. And some whites that will be, you know what I'm saying? Yes. But what he's saying is that the Gentiles are sinners by nature because they have never been nurtured in the nature of Torah. So it may not be their intention to be sinners. You know what I'm saying? But that's all they know because they never came under the yoke of Torah. But now coming into the yoke of Christ, we are supposed to give them what is the best and the blessed as principles. Not as them becoming Jews, but these are principles for life and liberty. That's what Paul okay. does. Paul does Brother that a whole James. lot. Hmm? Brother James 5, James 5, 13. Okay, keyword there. Let's see. Uh, let me see. Uh... James, let's see, 5, 13. What's all, it's all about the tongue, right? Uh, uh, it says, um, in, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Any, okay, yeah, I, got any Mary. <laughs> I, I got I got you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing it back on subject right there. Okay, I got six verses here. James 5.13, yes? Yeah, is, James 5.13, you're going to stop at 18. Okay, is, is, any, is any among you afflicted? Make him pray. Is any Mary make him sing psalms? Okay, can I just pause here for a moment? Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see. Okay, the pause here for a moment right here. Excuse me while I light my offering right here. You know, make my offering smoke. Mm -hmm. I will join you. I'm gonna make the offering smoke. <laughs> I'm gonna sip. I'm gonna sip. You know. Yeah. 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 But um. Is any among you afflicted? Remember I said how prayer, from my understanding and the study of Torah, it seems to be firstly that self-analysis and on a personal level. Because how can you do it for somebody else if you don't do it properly for yourself? You know what I mean? That's why this verse brings it out from James. And James was the first bishop of Jerusalem. James, right? And he was martyred. But is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. That means that the afflicted person is instructed to do tefillah, right? And the tefillah is what? What's another word for tefillah? Two words. Prayer. Prayer or self? Analysis. Self-analysis. Check oneself. Let him pray. Because you got to pray, why am I afflicted? He says rejoice, be of good. So w what in me is causing that? You know, to work that out. But if any is any merry, is any of you are happy, let him sing psalms. No, it says psalms. They don't say songs. Notice the word psalms is different than songs. We got a, we got a reason on that one there too. How psalms is one thing, not songs. See, in church now they sing a lot of songs, but they don't sing psalms. Have you noticed most churches don't? I'm talking about psalms. The psalms of David, the psalm psalms. You know, yeah, yeah, they sing songs, sing songs, but sing songs, yeah, <laughs> and songs, chant, chant the psalm day. Mm. exactly. Nothing wrong with songs if they're good songs, but what I'm trying to say is that the, the whitewashed Christian church and other churches have lost sight. Like when we're reading in the Hebrew or the Amharic, there's a difference between the word mezmor. Right, Mesmor or in the Hebrew, Mesmor, Mesmor the Hebrew, and Mesmor the Amharic. And those are chants like the Psalms of David. That's one thing that I would say that the Ethiopic Church of His Majesty, I think even some remnant of the church, the true church and the professing church, still does to this day. They regard the Psalms very highly. I find that in Christianity, they don't regard the Psalms very highly. They take the 23rd Psalm, they put it in the baby's crib. You know what I mean? And maybe yeah. another psalm, but they don't really regard the the psalms are not important because the psalms will check you. 
Are you reading a psalm and David's going to quote something about a burnt sacrifice or offering and you won't understand what he means by that if you don't study Torah. He's using the symbology, right, of, of the offering to make a higher new covenant point. In other words, David, in a sense, was a precursor in spirit for the Messiah, where the Messiah said, you see this temple of the building? That's not the real temple. That's, that's an object lesson. The real temple is the body, you know, and his spirit is dwell in the body. He's to dwell in us. You see what I'm saying? So, so I just want to make the point about Psalms, Psalms, right? Verse 14 to 18, it says, is any sick among you? Let him call. Notice what it says. Who is supposed to call? Let him. Let him call. Because what happens, somebody be sick and say, I'm going to call for the priest or the rabbi. But the person said, no, 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 no. Maybe they don't want the priest or rabbi or the elders of the church. But if they do, you see what I'm saying? It still is putting it on the one who is in a, it's almost like when you go in a hospital or medical coverage and they want to know what do you want. They'll let you know what they advise unless it's a serious emergency. You know what I mean? Case, you know, let him call for the elders of the church and let him pray. Let them pray. Let them do what? Pray over him. Now, see, this is a unique case where we have a group. Remember, he is calling for the elders. He is on, I'm going to pray for you. What? Ho, 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 ho. You know, hold up. You're going to pray for somebody you're imposing. It's like when I hear people talk about sending love. I wasn't going to talk about this, but I'm going to mention this right here. Sending love. One has to be careful about sending love. You know what I mean? Because, see, we're sending love. How do we really send love? Think about it for a moment. <laughs> wow. If, what you mean? You know, if love is God, <laughs> you know, it's better to say one love if one can come into the one, then it's one love, then it's, it's no pressure. But notice the one that said, it said, let him call for the elders of the church, right? And then let them pray, you know, let them pray over him, you know, let them pray over him. You know what I'm saying? Could he call for them, anointing him? Right? With oil in the name of Ha'adon, in the name of the Lord. Notice, notice, this, this is instruction. Like when he says, whatever you ask the Father in my name. Think about that for a moment. Sometimes some of us may pray and may have good prayers and he might understand we don't know what we should know, but he reads our heart and he grants us what we ask. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then he also may send ones to us that are trying to give us the instructions from the word and through the Holy Spirit so we can be able to do better, right? Um, where it says, in the name of the Lord. Notice that, in the name. Sometimes I hear them in church saying, in the name of the Lord, and I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for the name. They hear the name, but they never call it. Yeah, they say in the name, and, and such such in the name of the Lord. Well, what is the name of the Lord? You see what I'm saying? Like, like in the, when it was in the Hebrew, but here it's speaking about in the name of the Lord, and we can take this as in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua Ha Mashiach. Verse 15, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Now, this is interesting. The prayer of faith in the Orthodox Church is a specific, there are specific prayers. You know what I'm saying? In other words, there are some, let me put it like this, there are some formulas of prayer. Like the Our Father prayer is a formula of prayer. If you study it, it's a formula of prayer. For those who are Yehudi or Judaic will no doubt recognize it from like the Siddur, like the even the latter day Yehudi prayer books. It has the same kind of form of prayer. And a form of prayer basically, how can I say, it breaks down the basic needs. It doesn't mean that one's prayer has to be limited to it. You know, you can zoom in on certain areas, but it gives you the basic structure. You know, like our father, right? First of all, who we're calling on and, and where is he, right? You know, thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The first important thing, that will, to make our wills obedient, right? On earth as in hollow, holy, set apart is thy name. You know what I mean? And then getting into the details. Give us this day. Notice what the prayer really asks for, right? Is giving of that daily bread, right? It's declaring that thy kingdom come. 
right? That kingdom come. But what it's also saying is that we who are mature are, are the workers, are the co-laborers who are bringing the kingdom to pass. You see what I'm saying? And therefore we need daily bread, right? You know, and forgive us our trespasses, right? Our wrongdoings as we forgive those who wrong us. So that means that if we don't forgive those who wrong us, we don't deserve all this. We don't deserve forgiveness. This is to keep the, the cleansing of the body. So even while we say that prayer by like rote, it's it's like a it's like a formulaic prayer. If our hearts and our minds are in the right iritical space, spiritual space, we're self analyzing ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Based on the prayer of faith. Where do we stand right now as we stand to make this word sound? You know what I'm saying? As we stand before the heavenly king. Where do we stand in, have I been forgiven? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive. Our, that's why he says, if you remember that your brother has done something to you, you leave your offering there and you go be reconciled to your brother. Because how can you continue with your prayer or your offering and you're going to say these words, you know what I'm saying? But you have not done the act if you if you really are examining yourself. You know, you know, um, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who that's why notice after Christ quotes the prayer, notice he says about if 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 you don't forgive others, the father's not gonna forgive you. You know what I'm saying? No, he says that right after that in what what is that, John chapter, what is that? John chapter what six? He says that right after the Our Father prayer, the extra part you wanted to, re to have read. Yeah. He says that as a reminder that that so so it doesn't come out overtly that prayer is self-examination, but you can see it now that you understand what the Hebrew word tefillah is. You can see that that's a part of it. That's what it says, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, because it is believed, it is amen that. If the prayer of faith is telling us what our faith is based on, that will clear up whatever psychological and spiritual, if we are self-examining ourselves. You know what I mean? We know what to clean up. You know what I mean? You know, like if it's a dirty room and the lights are out, once you turn on the lights, you recognize what to clean up. Yeah. And you can clean that up. Now, now you can go through with this and now you feel better. And the Lord shall raise him up right and if he have committed sins notice that right there if he have committed sins they shall be forgiven they shall be forgiven him confess your faults one to another and pray one for another right and pray one for another that ye may be healed now even it's interesting this word pray here right um ikumai and then we have um, 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 prosekumai, prosekumai, like, like it seems to be like going forward on behalf someone else's behalf, or going forward right f on one's behalf, like to wish well. So, like for example, among the faithful, our prayers for our brothers and sisters is the I and I. You know what I mean? As we want good for I, our prayer is for our fellow. I them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the same, same thing. Same way, yeah. It's not particularized like you're getting into somebody's business like P-R-E-Y instead of P-R-A-Y. Like you're praying on some. It's not like that. It's basically that we want good for all who call upon the name of the King of Kings. You know? Hashem Yeshua. Pray one for another that... Notice what it says, that ye may be healed. Notice, notice that right there. That it says, that ye may be healed. So, in other words, if we don't pray one for another and wish well and will that good things be to our fellow, say, Rastafari, our fellow Yehudi, our fellow Israelites, no wonder we're so sick. As it says, it says, and pray one for another that ye may be healed. You know what I mean? Yeah. And do good to one another that good may be done to you. So, if you don't do good to one another and you say, hey, good is not being done to me, I say, have you been doing good to one another? And you say, well, well, <laughs> That explains. It's already explained there. So I just want to break this down for once. Notice what it says, confess. Now I think one of the most difficult things in the body of Rastafari as well as in the body of Christ, 
it's, it's one and the same, but we're speaking from the head. You know what I mean? Heartically speaking, that confessing is probably one of the most challenging things. You know why? Because of the trust factor. And you know why the trust factor is hard there? Because of the faith. Notice when it says the prayer of faith, it was talking about something that was known to be the prayer of faith. You know what I mean? There is a prayer of faith of the apostles. We find that in the Ethiopic um, liturgy. And in a sense, it's a very Judaic prayer, but it's, it's anointed in the Messiah. Right? It's the prayer of faith. It says confessing our faults one to another means that if I say to the brother, say, yo, bro, you know, I've been going through a lust issue, man. You know, like I know what the, the Robano says, but such and such. And, you know, I might go into some details of it. Right? That means that if I confess this to the eye as my brethren in Rastafari, you know, in, in Yeshua, that you're not supposed to now post that all over Facebook and blow me up. Yeah, or CNN. You're not supposed to CNN me. You know what I mean? You know, but in doing that, that I'm, 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 I'm confessing so that my brother can strengthen me or bun me out. I remember man and man used to sometimes be able to confess to their brethren and their brother will burn them out. You know, sometimes we may need that, need our, our hygiene to make us feel a way, you know what I mean? Because nobody else is really going to do that. Nobody else is going to know how to do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and you know, iron sharpen iron. It, it didn't say paper sharpen iron. You know what I mean? It didn't say claw for flesh. It didn't say flesh sharpens iron. You know, that's what it says, the effectual, fervent prayer. Effectual, right? Energetic operative by right? putting forth power effectual fervent putting forth power prayer of a righteous man availeth much you know why because a righteous man or woman has credit they have credit they have standing like in court language is like standing you know what i mean if you have standing in court you know what i mean you can enter into a case even though you was not a part of that case because you have standing before the court the court recognizes you so being a righteous man, if you are energetically, fervently praying for the well-being of a brother or sister, right, that does nothing enough. You know what I mean? Elias, Elias, or Eliyahu, right? It's, you know, Elijah here, that's his coin of Coptic name, Elias, Elias, like in them hard, Elias, was a man subject to like passions. I mean, he had like feelings like us, you know? as we are and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain so check out what mine and mine pray for chan you know what i'm saying mine and mine is praying that it doesn't rain for three years for three years <laughs> you talk about a, a powerful man of prayer there you know he's praying that it does not rain for three years for three years <laughs> right and it rained not on the years. earth by the space of three years. What a drought. What a drought. And six months. Three and a half. Get that three and a half years. You know. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. And the earth brought forth her fruit. Right. Is is, is that the part right there? Or. or, yeah. or, 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 or. Right there. Yeah, good right there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because. The next part, probably for another reasoning. Yeah. <laughs> the next two verses. But yeah. yeah. Prayer. So let's bring up to feel out for everyone. Everyone I've been seeing the Bible for a moment. Ones that have gotten this far, hopefully, in this uh, Just Vibes and presentation on to feel out. And I want to heal up um, this site, um, Nezarim. Now, Nezarim, branches. Is that ne branches? Yeah. Nets Arim at net, net, no Nets Arim man to E C I E. Okay, here as another one to 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 entreat to beg, right? But the prayer in a simple sense, like if you look at the next one where it has the the black and white the the slides, it says from the palal to judge, and the reflexive the the lehit palal lehit palal. That's like praying going back and forth praying self-analyzing oneself or making one's case in the spirit right to the almighty right and in what spirit 
in your spirit with the Holy Spirit as the comforter. You know, self-analysis, finding one's distance from Yahweh and seeking to improve it by an alignment of mental, physical, and verbal supplication. This is what David does too. Where he said, take not your Holy Spirit from me. David. David talking about the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. I just had to make that point in Psalm 51. He's talking about the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, right? And then the one, the Avino, you know, the Avino is what we call in the, in the, is the Abuna. Abuna Zebes Samayat, our Father who art in heaven. One day Yeshua was praying in a certain place when he finished one of his Talmudin, one of his disciples. I'm looking at the one that says the Avino in brief. The one that says Avino in brief. That's in the modern Hebrew. It would be more Abinu. Abinu. When you say Yeshua was praying, what 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 context is that prayer or praying is a form of? Okay. Do you see the, do you see the um slide? The one that says the Avino. One of them says in brief. One says in brief. It's in big bold letters. I think I sent that to the eye. Hopefully, I did send that to the eye. Because because uh, I I just caught a few of them and said let me send all of them through. Oh wait 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 is that is is it not there? Avino in brief. Oh wow, oh wow. Hold on for one moment. Hold on for one moment. Everybody watching the vlog, you see it. You see it right there. But brother man doesn't see it right there. So I just wanna wanna see if I can grab that one. You know, grab that one and show that one him as well well this one this is from luke chapter 11 so he asks like in what context in what context does it say that yeshua you know was um yeah in what context does it say that he was praying right here and i i, I want to find this one if i can and send it to the eye let's see send it to the eye um wow okay there there, there, there I go there I go there I go there there we go there we go right here um so we're working like two phones people so um yeah so here here it's coming now bro so you can see this one right here let me go back to this let me let me put a, a yes eye to break up the the pictures so the pictures won't be okay right here you'll see that one it should just it should, it should just pop up yeah i got this okay that's the one right there that's one right there, and this is another one that I find interesting. Okay, so it's Luke 11 and 1. So it says when Yeshua or Jesus was praying in a certain place. So um, let me just go over here to pray, right? Pray, let's, let me put Jesus, go on from the English. Jesus, pray, right? Um, um, let, let me put place there too. Play, pray, certain place. Okay, let me take out certain place. And let me, let's see. Uh, what is it? Is Luke, okay, it's Luke 11. Luke 11, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here and see what King James says it. Okay, and it came to pass. Okay, they, they abbreviated it. They didn't say Jesus, but they, 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 they re-contextualize it. And it came to pass that as he yeshua was praying so the word praying here is prosekomi prosekomai prosekomai and prosekomai to offer prayers it, it corresponds to the word tefillah basically basically pro pro like to go before like go forward and ekomai ekomai is like to wish or to um yeah to wish to will in that sense but in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew of it, let me just get the Hebrew right here of this. Because then I know that when the Hebrew and the Amharic lines up, that's what I like about the Hebrew, right? It says here, it says, why he or who, and it be, why he, why he, and who he, mita palel, mita palel bimakom, echad. And he, mita palel, palel, tepila, tefila, mita palel, be makom in a makom in a spot echad, and so he was praying to say tefillah, 
He was doing tefillah in a certain place. Cause remember, prayer has a twofold sense. It can be like to check yourself or it's to pray on another's behalf, to, to seek their well-being. You know, almost like, almost like good and welfare. When we say good and welfare, all right, for one's good and welfare. So he was praying in a certain place. Let me go back to the King James Version, right? So we can see, well, how is it in King James Version? And while he's praying in a certain place, it says right here, um, when he ceased, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Oh, wow, wow, bro. I've been looking for this before. You know, teach us to pray as John taught the disciples. Because, you know, the, the Lord's Prayer is found in... In first in Matthew chapter 6 that's what most people go to but here is interesting because note note the question or, or the request his disciples the Talmudim right um, that's the Hebrew word Talmudim like students disciples they came to him saying Adon like Adoni they said Adon teach us right Adoni teach us Lamdenu teach us Lehita Palel to pray, Ka'asher, like that, Limaid, taught, right, Gam, also Yohanan, that also John taught, et Talmudayo, that taught to his disciples. So here is the scene where after Yeshua was praying, and after he finished praying in a certain place, right, speaking, communing in the spirit with the Father, you know, one of his disciples, we don't know which one it could be. We don't know which one. But one of his disciples said to him, Adoni, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught the disciples. So you, you have that there, right? Yeah. Now, what's interesting about this right here, right? And he said to them, when y'all pray, say, our Father who art in heaven, holy be thy name, right? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us this day, our, day by day, our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. So we get a little more of the sense of this, right? And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now note that in the, the fifth verse, it doesn't have the conclusion we have in Matthew. So there's like, I think, two forms of the Our Father prayer. We call this the short form here in Luke. But he, he concludes it with, lead us not and deliver us from evil. Lead us not in temptation, deliver us from evil. And he said to them, which of you shall have a friend and shall go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine is in his journey, is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say to you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity and importunity right this is uh, an idea it means like shamelessness impudence right it means like taking opportunity not caring like like i'm gonna ask you anyway i need this you know what i'm saying because of his importunity he will rise and give him as many as he needeth in other words he he's saying right here to bug you know like like like, like don't stop communing with the father on what you, you know what i mean and I say to you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. It's amazing that the word ask has all of those words. Ask, A for ask, S for seek, and K for knock. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Right? So he's going through this whole thing. To basically remind them that when you pray, you understand, um, be importune about it. You know what I mean? Because we don't know what he was saying. 
And all we know that he was praying, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> In a certain place. And when he finished, they asked him, not what you were praying, but they asked him, you know, um, teach us to pray as John. So think about this. This prayer here in Luke chapter 11 is a shorter prayer, isn't it? Yeah. It doesn't have about the kingdom, thy kingdom. Uh, it don't have like, thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. You don't have that part there. So it could be that Yeshua, when going over this again with his disciples, have the longer part that we're used to. So this could be as what John, because remember this, the, the Our Father prayer, just for ones and ones who don't know, it's an old Yehudi Jewish prayer that has been traced back to like the apocryphal times, the 400 years between Malachi and Matthew. So it, it's already known in form and structure. The Our Father prayer was a Yehudi prayer, but it seems as though in the version that Yeshua gives in Matthew, it's a little longer than the one that the disciple asked to teach them how John taught his disciples. Remember, it's like like teach us how to pray, right? How also, John taught his, disciples. his disciples. So we have, I believe, we have Yeshua's prayer in Matthew chapter six, the first one that we went into, which is a, a fuller one that that even more invokes the kingdom to come, you know, establishing the kingdom. That's the part that is not fully, fully here. You understand? In John's version. And John's version is shorter. Right? And then he basically is saying that when you pray, right, you have to be about self-analysis and aligning oneself. You know what I mean? You know, almost like a tune-up. Like if you have a car, you're going to regularly check your brakes, right? You're going to check your air pressure, right? In the tires. You know, people check those things on a sem, you know, the 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 antifreeze or the you know radiator, uh, you know, fluid. You know what I'm saying? You, yeah. You're gonna see what your oil. You know, you're gonna check on these things. And it's interesting that we check on these things sometimes more than we check on our own physical body. That the psalmist says was wonderfully created. You know, dreadfully and wonderfully made. You know what I'm saying? And that's the and that's the body on the outer level. Much more prayer is dealing with the inner health the inner health and prayer begins from a personal act right and one should only intercede for others when they are mature enough to pray for their own and self analysis for their own you know what I mean because like you know if if you don't know how to represent your own case so I share the Abino in brief because the Abino is the our father Avino our father like we say Abuna Abinu in Hebrew for a B sound more than a V in the ancient pointing is like Abuna, as we say Abuna in the Gutas. One of his Talmudim said to him, Adonai, teach us to pray as John taught the disciples. Now the Pharisees said to Yeshua in Luke 5.33, John's Talmudim, John's disciples often, remember you brought up this at first before we started recording, fast and pray. Yeah. And so do the Talmudim of the Pharisees. But yours go on eating and drinking. So what, what they're saying, the Pharisees, these Pharisees were saying to Yeshua is that John has disciples. And they often, all the time, they're fasting and praying. And so do the disciples of the Pharisees. So that shows how Yeshua's disciples was another set. You know what I mean? Like I and I, the new name, the precious name, I and I, Rastafari, was a different set. So there was already John's set, John the Baptist. There was already Marcus Garvey, the UNIA. You know what I mean? There was also the Talmudim of the black church and religious groups. You know what I'm saying? Out there. But notice this difference. He's saying, right, but yours go on eating and drinking. You, you remember that part there? Because I think Yeshua says something like when the bridegroom is with them, you know, they feast. But there'll be a time when the bridegroom is not there. And then they can fast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's like, it's like when the man is with us, you know what I mean? We enjoy the man. You know what I mean? When the guest is with us, we should enjoy to the fullest, you know, the guests. You know? So just to share that right there, you know, on on Yeshua's prayer, you know, and the standing, you know, 
prayer. Another thing I didn't share with her eye, but I got this on the screen, where they say that Judaism teaches in the synagogue, which is like the Jewish church service, the protocol of how to approach our king. This is what I'm pointing that out. That there's this sense that many of us have recovered as we study the, the documents that the thing that many of us gravitate to the Yehudi or the Jewish or the Judaic sense of it from the scripts is that the worship is just as the Torah has it, is that when we approach God, Hailehim, Yahweh, Eloheinu, we are like approaching our king. This is the interesting aspect of it, right? That, that the prayer service of the Yehudi is as a people speaking to their king. This is why I find the Rastafari and the Black Jewish connection to be so fundamental. And it Go seems. To Go to Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15. Yeah. You have two, 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 um, two scriptures in there, just two. Oh, okay, give me two key words. The first one would be, uh, let me just read the, the one I wanted, it's eight. Would be, uh, the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. Oh, okay, okay, that's that, that, that's a, that's a good one right there. I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a search sacrifice and wicked, and it should, and should. So what the people are seeing is this easy way to surf around this software. All right, yeah, I got it, I got it. So it's verse. Go, go through it, go through. You saw in yeah, verse eight. eight. Yeah, it says uh, that the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight ah uh, yes 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 that verse that verse hold that verse right there and compare that with um what's the verse on on incense let's see incense incense and prayer right psalm 140 um psalm 141 141 and two go there bro connect it with what you just shared here from proverbs 15 and 8 but the prayer of the upright the yasha that's yasha that's jasha actually in the hebrew upright yasha we say yasha in the hebrew but in english that'll be jasha yasha yasha that's 141 and, and what and two and two let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense. Uh oh. <laughs> and the lighting up of my hands. Lifting. As the, uh, 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 oh, yeah, and let's give it the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Boom. You see what David bringing out now? You brought out Solomon from Proverbs, right? We just brought out here David. Now, notice, he says, Let my prayer, the same tefillah, people on the screen can see the tefillah right there, prayer, right? My same prayer and prayer, they define prayer as also, yeah, in the title of some of the Psalms, right? Intercession, supplication, it could be a hymn in a Davidic sense. Be set forth before thee as incense because it was usual to offer incense. That's why if you go to Revelation, right? You get to Revelation, Revelation chapter 5, verse 8. Right, I'm gonna go back to this. I'm gonna go forward and back just to connect this right here, where it says, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors. The vials are like you know, like in the church, the Orthodox Church, when they have the, the incense, the censers, you know, the censers that like a, like, like a chalice. At the bottom yeah. part of a chalice, right? Which are the prayers of the saints. Notice, he is connecting the golden vials, which are like the, the censers, right? That are full of odors. The censers that are full of odors, right? Like the sauces, the bowls, right? With the aishans, right? And it says that this is the prayer of the saints. And then if you go to John, I mean, Revelation 8 and 3, it says, and another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given to him much incense, right, that he should offer it with the prayers. 
So the connection of Priya and Aishans need not be forgotten from a Hebrew, a Judaic, a Yeshua from the way. This is the way, right? Because when the priest would come into the Holy of Holies before the Ark, he had to have incense. He had to put the Aishans on first. You know, before he even started his his his, his work, his reasoning with the presence. You know what I mean? Aishans. That's why it often says in the Bible that there was smoke coming out of the smoke coming out of the temple. Smoke. That was the Aishans. All the Aishans burning. That means that that when you get when you go into the the throne, like the ark, will be like the throne room directly before his presence. One will off it with Aishans, or in, even in the first room where the where the where the altar of Aishans was. It was right between originally it was between the room that had. The, the bread, the, the show bread, the, the menorah, the lampstand, and the Aishans was right there at the veil. Later on, we study the Torah, we find that the Aishans was moved into where the ark was. In the time of David, the Aishans and the ark was together. You know? And it says the Aishans should be offered with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar. Now, the golden altar is not the brazen altar. The brazen altar is for the debtors on the outside. But in Moshiach, we come from the debtors altar. The debtors altar is sealed up my, with him my, both as victim and victor. He is both victim and victor. In other words, the victim, the, the lamb, you know what I mean? But the victor, right? Because he's the Bain Elohim. You know what I'm saying? And the golden altar is the incense altar, which is before the throne. The throne is symbolic for the ark. Because the ark, if you look at the ark, the ark is symbolically a throne. The ark is, that's why if you look at his majesty's, um, his majesty's, um, um, his, his, his arma, or, or what do you call it, his insignia, you see the throne room. And when you see the throne room, right? It's like looking into the tabernacle, right? You have Judah is at the entrance gate, the tribe of Judah. So that's where the line of Judah is. And when you look past everything, you see the throne and two angels like the two cherubim. And what do you see on the seat? You see the bowl and the rod. Remember Aaron's rod and the bowl of manna. <laughs> so the last verse right here is, is Revelation 8 and 4. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints. So it's known in the Hebrew that when it was time to pray, whether in the first room or where the Ark of the Covenant was in the Holy of Holies, that the prayers before the, the Levites, I mean not the Levites, but the priests would start the prayers, the incense had to burn, right? And the incense, well, the incense is burning the prayers, because the idea was like, may my, may my prayer ascend like the incense and may ascend upon the incense. Because remember, everything in, 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 in the tabernacle, not everything, but a lot is about smell. Think about it. A sweet savor. You know what I mean? The sweet aishans, right? So may my prayers be acceptable as the sweet aishans, right? So the smoke of the aishans came with the prayers of the saints. It ascended. It allied up before Elohim, out of the angel's hand, <laughs> out of the messenger's hand. So when David says what he says in Psalm 141, this is new covenant in the old covenant. You know what I'm saying? He's saying, let my prayers be set forth before thee as incense. That could mean that he didn't have incense. Like, like I, I walk in, I don't have Aishans. I don't have a sacrifice. But I want to worship. So I'm saying, let my prayer be set forth before you as the Aishans. And the lifting up of my hands, and you know the lifting up of the hands, you've you, you seen that like in, even in Egypt, where they put their hands up, yeah. with the palms up towards heaven. That is a symbolic gesture in many cultures of worship. What the Egyptians were good at was putting some of these symbolic gestures, right, within their linguistics and within their articulation. So that hand sign of put your hands up, put your hands up is a sign of worship. 
right? And so the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. So really that made my lifting up of my hands be acceptable as though I was offering up a sacrifice. So what David was doing was taking the literal and in a sense making it metaphysical. You know what I mean? You know, taking the literal and making it metaphysical. And that's why he says, set a watch, O Jah, right before my mouth. Keep the doors of my lips. You know, <laughs> then he says, incline not my heart to any evil thing. To practice wicked works with men that work iniquity. Make me not eat of their dainties. So notice, he's going in to pray. You know what I'm saying? S singing this song. <laughs> But the words of the song is really also directed to himself. Remember, David is self-analyzing um, himself. It's self-analysis here. He said, don't incline my heart right, to any evil thing. Incline my heart to the good. I don't want to practice wicked works with men that work iniquity. I don't even want to eat of their dainties. Right? Then he said, let the righteous smite me. Right? It shall be a kindness. Let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil. So now you're talking about the oil and anointing, the theme of anointing, which shall not break my ras. It shall not break my head. <laughs> For yet my prayer. Notice what he says. You see what it says in verse 5? Also shall be in their calamities. He says, yet my tefillah, my prayer, also shall be in their calamities now it's an interesting reasonment here what is david saying right he says let the righteous smite me kindly and reprove me and let not their precious oil break my head because i i'm also praying for the righteous i have no problem with the righteous you see what i'm saying those who you know is righteous if i have to be smit and hit in kindness right let them smite me like Notice David's, David's language. Let him hit me. Like, like juke me with kindness. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, it, to reprove me, to correct me. Maybe I need to get hit hard. But let it be in that kindness. See, David has a way with words. This is like new covenant here, right? It shall be an excellent oil which shall not break my head for my prayer also shall be in their calamities. So when they have trouble, my prayer is in their bad times too. You know what I mean? But then he goes on to say, when their judges are overthrown in stony places, they shall hear my words, for they are sweet. <laughs> David is confident. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. David, David knows. See, when it says that David was a man after Jehovah's own heart, this was not really told to David so much directly. It was told of David. You see what I'm saying? But somehow David had the confidence in his own heart to compose these sort of words, which are more New Testament than what a lot of people think New Testament is. Because he's he's he 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 even says that Jah doesn't require a burnt offering and sacrifice, right? Doesn't David say that too? They David already knew that way back when. Before the New Testament, even he knew that a broken heart, a contrite spirit, is what he really accepts. He don't look at the outside. The outside, you could offer a thousand bulls, you go offer a thousand bullocks and a thousand this and all that, but your heart is not broken. You know, I mean, if you go offer a thousand bulls, that means you got a lot of wealth. A thousand bulls is not going to drive you in a poorhouse. You know what I mean? So you must have a lot of, you know, oxen and livestock. Right, but the broken heart, right, the contrite spirit, you know, because he already knew that the Almighty sees in secret, you know, sees in secret. That's why he says to John, he says, Don't incline my heart. You know, my heart, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm a man after your own heart. Well, he could have said that, but he didn't say that because I suspect that he got to know that, but after people testified and after time. But at first, when John said that, he was saying that of David. He's saying that I think he said it to either Samuel or to one of the prophets. Like David is David is good people. David is real people. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, don't judge him by the outside. You know, he may be wild on the outside. You know, may, may be a little red, 
or whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let me close out with um, one more from Proverbs. Uh, it's uh, Proverbs 29, but if you want, you're going to read 28 first. I just read it out right now. Uh, like you're there? Pro- yeah. uh, Proverbs 28 to 29. Um, what, what does it say? A part of the verse. You, you... Uh, the, the heart of the righteous strengthened to answer. Excuse me, studied. Studied. Studied to answer. The okay. heart of the righteous studied to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poured out evil things. Okay, okay, that's that's Proverbs what? 28 to 29. I really want, 29 is really the one, but I, I kind of think I should be wait, right. wait, 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 what chapter? Uh, chapter 15, sorry about that. Oh, okay, 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 yeah, no, I was, I was there, okay, yeah, 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 I, I got it, I got it. Yeah, the heart of the righteous studieth. Yes. Mm. So the heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poured out evil things. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the mm. prayer of the righteous. Wow, that, that verse come again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I think that's a good one to close out that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yahuwah is far from the wicked. But he heareth the prayer, right? The tefillah. He heareth the self examination. <laughs> self analysis. Self analysis. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, I, yes, I, yes, I. So, so right here, here, here on tefillah. Tefillah, tefillah. It's, it's, it's tefillah. It's, it's, a, it's a fullness. Yeah. And the earth it, is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. You know, like that one that said word of the week. I have that one on here right here. And just that quote from the word of the week right down here. It says uh, 69 and 13. But as for I and I and I, I and I prayers to the I, O Jehovah, at an acceptable time. Oh, Haile Him, Elohim, in the greatness of your loving kindness, answer I and I and I with your, the I saving truth. Yes, saving truth. Yes, I. <laughs> in spirit and in truth. Amen, amen. Give thanks, my brother. Give thanks, my brother. You got to put this one right up there on Tefillah. Tefillah, word of the week, Tefillah prayer um yeah man yeah man yeah man this one is self-analysis ah hebrew prayer equals self-analysis yes sir yeah 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 yes sir (laughs) hashtag (laughs) tefillah hashtag tefillah get full full fulfill right fulfill the tefillah (laughs) (laughs) rastafari yes sir yes sir i'm gonna seek to get this one forward Hopefully, maybe in the next couple of hours for the for the for the, for the for the work week, so to speak, to make them strong. You know what I mean? Strong in tefillah. You know? Yes, I give thanks, yes, my I. brother. I give guidance and protection yes, to all. Yes, I. Yes, aye, I. aye, aye. Shalom, Rastafari.